My biggest fear is that I can't see. Sins all the same, it's just not for me. So much going on that I can't breathe. I need you to hear me come say, Lord, I'm not blabbing, it's above me. I'm so far beyond that I can't keep up. I need to promise I'm above me. If you just take the time to hear me. And I've been waiting, running to the Lord. I'm coming home because He's been patient. I've been hella faithful to Satan. Mind changing, I'm just trying to get it right before He replace me. You know, sin is contagious. Yeah, I'm looking forward, but mentally stubborn and morally. My mind telling me the world glitter and it's more to see. I'm running from myself, going double time mentally. Sometimes I shock myself. I ain't know that thing exists in me. How to me against the enemy? War time, and I ain't looking for a friend in me. Yeah, Lord, shine some rays on me. Uh. I ain't a gangster, but sometimes I gotta tap into that energy. World shakers, no crap flow, but world changes. Still aging, pray when he find me, I'm found faithful. World shakers, no crap flow, but world changes. Still aging, pray when he find me, I'm found faithful. I've been going double, double, yeah. I've been going double time. I've been going double, double, yeah. I've been going double time. I've been going double, double, yeah. I've been going double 
whole time. I've been going double, double, yeah. I've been going double time. Yeah, man. Ever since I found out the truth about my nationality. Nationality. I've been going hard on the daily, spiritually. Spiritually. All these curses, correlations. I'm crazy the way that I'm pacing, but I put my faith in most high. I know who I am now, I know that I'm chosen, and I don't plan on going I've been back. going double, double, yeah, I've been going double time, double time, I've been going double, double, yeah, I've been going double time, I've been going double, double, yeah, I've been going double time, I've been going double. I've been going double time, double time. Seen him 10,000 times, I'm in overdrive. The workload don't move slow. My hat's off to true folks. I salute those that follow the Jew code. No days off, bringing the light to the people like Akon. Our faith strong like King Kong. We'll move in a moment. And it's zero to a hundred from night to the morning till we get it how we want it. Yeah. Round and around and around we go. Same Learned the truth and took off like a rocket. Got me going double time like I'm rocking two watches. It feels good to be a prophet surrounded by prophets. And I refuse to be that dog that returned to his vomit. Uh, Father, I'm working to come back to you. Studying the word in the scripts like I'm a character. Keeping these commandments and that's building up my character. Driving out these demons now, no more dodging them challenges. I done away with all those spirits I was entertaining. Hoping and praying that you listen to my supplication. Constantly changing to the guy that you created. Ain't Feeling suicidal, but I'm trying to die daily. Cause I know the mission, and I know what's waiting in the end. The kingdom's coming, we getting closer, I can feel it. Gotta stay diligent, I'm steady playing my position. Lord knows that I don't wanna miss it. So I've been going, I've been going double, double, yeah. I've been going double time. Tell me where the love goes. Where the love, tell me where the love go, tell me what it is, what it is, what it was though, you looking puzzled, oh, oh, oh. tell me where the love go, love, 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 love. This is the message, keeping it separate, cutting them all off, you can get separate, tell me now, where did the love go, where twice something i never get like his headlights is you fronting like headlights like these niggas they read scriptures then they pass them off like flea flickers at minimum keep it three digits it broke my heart seeing serena spin the father face the race you they gave him nothing but hate but somehow you found a mate where it's not the case we're watching wait because god is great i've been watching from out of space ain't it separate this is the message Cutting them all off, tell me now, where did the love go? Where did the love go? Correction brings perfection, so every lesson I'm perfected. Even though they laugh at my face, behind my back, they respect it. Got a Midas touch when love is cost. I know your sins when your soul is lost. Let's be honest, for the Father we pay homage, what's your life worth? In every city, in every town, he's choosing us first. Cannot compare me to a nigga, we let that all burn. From the highways to the hedges, we be telling them be separate. This is the message. Cutting them all off. Tell me now, where did the love go? Where did the love go? This 
is the message. Cutting them all off. Tell me now, where did the love go? Where did the love go? Sometimes I know we disagree Seem like we both on different pages It's like we're riding on a roller coaster The ups and downs But I only want it with you, baby You complete me and that's the truth, baby You give me anything I need more What more could I ask for? And we both know Yeah. 
Crazy as the days go, but I'm feeling like I need to make more time to get up in my Bible. Wanna progress, but myself is my rival. Uh, anger mixed with a little bit of pride inside. I'm still feeling like a bit of nigga, and I know that in a nigga need to die. Wait, wait, what I'm trying to gain? I don't wanna get too deep, I refrain. Now I'm trying to box it all in like a frame. Why I say I change if I really ain't changed, but I roll with the flow like a boat on rivers. Been feeling still, why they wanna take pictures? Stuck where I'm at like a mouse in a trap, all bullying in the net. What's wrong with you? Saying it's a pleasure, but it got to go. Don't wanna be cut with a sweat home. Stay strong, get up when you fall. Talking to myself, praying you I can go. My mind's trying to take me under To become just to wonder So I need you more than ever Don't want to fold you anymore My mind's trying to take me under To become just to wonder So I need you more than ever Like a child needs their father Was a 
lost boy was a wanderer thinking real hard i'm a ponderer didn't really know what time it was but it always seemed to feel ominous see i felt i needed no help autonomous see my life in my hands i almost blew it harmonica see i want to be moving but feeling but feeling but feeling like i'm running in place i want to feel safe I hope that this grace here for this backslider for the sometime that I lack fire slash back by the dash act higher than I all hashtag past life even though that time passed my mind still be a chastiser my mind need to be wrapped tighter I be like go easy on yourself but not too easy dog cause that's bias I wonder if I dealt with the same thing in the past life cause I need help I just don't act like it for real I wanna be moving but feeling but feeling but feeling like I'm running in place I know I'm awake I know that we're great yeah it's a trial, you just gotta fight through it That's why I like music, I can read the Bible and just write to it We not stupid, My mind's trying Go. to take me under To become just a wanderer So I need you more than ever Don't want to fold you anymore My mind's trying to take me under To become just a wanderer So I need you more than ever Like a child That's how we do it. Dream team. Champagne every day. I ain't got enough, seeing better days. Party in the hills, we gon' celebrate. Shut it down Saturday to Saturday. Dream team. Champagne every day, champagne every day. Your show now, but it's one. Champagne Your show is scheduled to start in 36 seconds. Champagne every day. Thank God now I'm seeing better days. Party in the hills, we gon' celebrate. Shut it down Saturday to Saturday. Dream team. Champagne every day. Champagne every day. Uh, champagne every day. Champagne every day. This can't be real. Oh, no. Your show will go live in five this seconds. Feels so Four, real. three, feels so two, real, yeah. one. It's that time again. Yeah. De la hora. You know, power hour. Mm -hmm. Uh, por, porle atención, class is in session, tune in for an hour, maybe more, that's a blessing, learn from the captains and the leadership, flee from religion, cause them churches never teaching shit, everything you learn for your benefit, line upon line is a requisite, never take a deficit, yeah, that mean you take a loss if you stray from the way, you get the understanding if you study every day, apply what you learn, and bless when you pray, it's one interpretation, man, it's say what it say, ya viene el tiempo, and para el templo, aprende del maestro con talento, la Biblia es el centro usando a Israel como instrumento no te pierdas en doctrina como viento estudia y ora y aplica tiempo para Dios, ven, hace una cita, escritura dinamita morenos y hispanos y salita oye como explica, Israel unido en Cristo para la vida, nunca se divida tune in, it's the power hour learn your family history don't be a coward, yeah Tune in, it's the power hour. I said, learn your family history, don't be a coward. Yeah, history, they learn. It's the power hour. The 11 hour. Tune in to your history. Shalom, shalom. Welcome to the Power Hour Plus Edition. I am Captain... I keep doing that. <laughs> I am Deacon hey. Joshua. De 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 Deacon in you the know, house. is that I was I was adjusting my volume because when my volume's not good, 
like when my levels aren't good, I get like you know, like I, I get out the spirit. Yeah. Like I'm used to hearing my voice mm-hmm. a certain way. Mm-hmm. I don't like the way my voice sounds over this medium anyway. You got to get used to it. Nah, I don't like to watch myself. I I I, 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 I hear myself just because, like you know, I know I gotta hear. It helps when I hear right. myself on the on the. But that's on that's the part of examining yourself because you see it. And you're like, you know, I should have done this, and you know, I shouldn't. Uh, Rub my face so much, or I shouldn't, you know. I, I can't, I can't watch myself, bro. Yeah. Like, like I'm, I'm maybe m- minute tops. If if I'm like, you know, like I'll do it. To, I do it more to make sure the editors and everybody else is doing stuff right. <laughs> Why is the camera right? Why is this right? I can't, I cannot watch my. I used to be into acting and stuff like that. Yeah. Like you know, I was trying to make my way. I did like a TV series pilot. That was like probably the furthest I ever got. <laughs> And uh, I can never watch myself like screen tests and yeah. stuff like that. Like, and they make you like as part of the practice because you're supposed to like what you just said. You're supposed to look at it and say this. How did this sound? How did that sound? Mm-hmm. And I couldn't stand it every time, bro. Like, I'd rather just put it out and then forget it. You know? Yeah. It make it. it I don't know. I, I, when I see myself, I'm kind of like, well, I need to work on this. I shouldn't do this. You yeah. Stand so close. You know, don't hug a brother. No, I think what you're saying makes sense. I mean, yeah. you know, I've had people tell me, like, hey, you know, you're rubbing your face too much and things yeah. like that. And, you know, I'm like, oh, okay. Maybe if I watched, I would notice right. some of the it's things a, that I do. It's a taste. I don't, I don't like it. I don't like, I don't like, uh, I don't like seeing myself. I don't like seeing yeah. myself. Who are you, by the way? I'm Deacon Yashua. Oh, Who are you? Officer Issachar. <laughs> Officer Issachar's in the house. I, I had to turn off building. my... It's my... <laughs> Is I, this is this his premiere on the plus? I think it is. Yeah. Oh it is. man, I, but we gotta give some applause, something. Do you got some more sound effects in there? I had to turn off the Espanol button off, you know. They used to see me with the Spanish. Yeah. <laughs> I know. That's what I'm saying. And you know, I know you've done the power hour in the past, and I know you do the span and la hora de poder. But this is your premiere on the plus. Yeah. And that's because Officer Shah is on his way to uh, IUIC of Puerto Rico. Yep. Traveling prophet. Right. Yeah. Traveling, right? A man who has traveled knows many things. So he's yeah. he's uh getting himself out there so that he can go ahead and uh you know, build his spirit up and help the help the prophets out there and get, our brothers and sisters out there. Get his feet wet out in the yeah, states. Yeah. And then of course we got Officer Tobias. Officer Tobias. All praises to the most high. All praise to the most high. Uh so we're back. We're back. Uh last week I could not get through everything, as is the case with the power hour. And uh that's why it's the power hour, because we get hot and it's like, damn, we got so much stuff we want to cover. Mm-hmm. And I know there's been requests for like part twos on certain topics and things like that, but the uh, what was it, the crucifixion? Yeah, yeah. I don't know, but like you know, it depends. Like some things, like I gotta really, I gotta be feeling it. Right. Yeah. I gotta be feeling it. But this this topic right here, you got a lot of things to, to cover, like a lot of things. I might not, depending on how it goes, depending on how you guys are. Mm-hmm. I think I think last week was a really good show conversationally. You know, everybody was was rocking and rolling. I was thinking, though, I said Issachar be talking though, so this is good. Right, yeah, this is good. I know he holds himself back when I'm doing a class. You know, yeah. respect and everything. Mm-hmm. But this is the radio show. Yeah, I try to I, so yeah. so speak. And I try and I try to you know I try to turn my change myself to a radio person because I'm always. Scripture after scripture after scripture after scripture. Yeah. You know what I mean? Oh, no. I mean, that's great, though. Yeah. I mean, you know, you want to bring that out. But, I mean, everybody has their format. But, you know, radio, radio, we get to chop it up a little yep. more. Mm-hmm. Right? We get to talk a little more. And, hey, and I always say this, like, Bishop Yawasop always brings this out, that uh, you you don't always have to just throw loads of scriptures at people. Sometimes you got to take your time, take one, talk about some things, put it in perspective. Right? Really kind of mm-hmm. pull everything out of that. And, um I think that I think that works well. It gives you a different uh, flow than to what you see necessarily in the classroom thing and stuff. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But I, I was I was like, okay. I said, I know Issachar speaks though. I said, Officer Issachar speaks, so I know yeah. he'll I know he'll have some feedback and some things to bring yeah. out. So all praises for that. All praises. Yeah, for that. I was looking at the, the show you did last week, and you were talking about the titles, and the titles. Sometimes the titles are too. Um, Cause y'all were looking for titles, and sometimes I remember Bishop in the back in the day. He uh-huh. had some titles like "A Hoe Is a Deep Ditch," and you're like, "Whoa, what's he talking about?" Uh-huh. And then he says, "That's scriptural," and mm-hmm. then you kind of like, "Okay, I see it." So last time you grabbed attention, then when you when you see some of these, you're like, "Ah, uh, ex- ex- what? Social engineering? What is <laughs> what, this what, talking this? about?" Yeah, exactly. It's, 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 I'm already scratching my head just yeah. reading the title. <laughs> <laughs> so I think sometimes it's like less is more, but you know, right? Okay. Yeah. Well, I know you're like a documentary man yeah. too. Like, so you like 
things like that really yeah. pique your interest. So you see it and you're like, yeah. But I know most of our people, they like a sensational title. Like, I don't know. It says the white man's plot to keep you in sin. Maybe that's going to pull some extra eyes in. Right. Yeah, <laughs> can only hope. Right. That put some extra eyes in. But we got, we're going to continue on with what we discussed last week because it was just a lot. I mean, you know, I don't particularly know where we left off. I know we didn't get into social constructs and things like that yet. Yeah. Um, but there's a few things. I don't even think we showed the video in that other article, right, where brain hacking and stuff. Did we go over that, producers? Uh, no. We yeah, didn't. oh, so we didn't see, yeah, no. listen, that we didn't even go into that. Wow, so we got a lot of stuff. Hold on, let me see. Hey, Deke, just to point something out, too, mm-hmm. for as late as it is, I just looked at the viewers uh, uh-huh. since you brought it up. It's, uh-huh. it's quite a few people. All praise to the most high. IUIC in the classroom, too, is packed. Yeah, it should, we, 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 we're gaining some traction. Yeah. Which is great. All praise to the most high. You know, we got you got to you got to see all tribes. Right. All tribes matter. Yep. Right. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Part of the weather is keeping them inside. Uh, that's uh, why. Uh, all tribes matter. All tribes matter. <laughs> <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> hey, put that on the shirt. That sounds good. Hey, what's that? What's the line in uh, in uh, Una Nacion, One Nation? Uh, see, he says something about they wouldn't be. 12 tribes without Mexicans. Yeah. It yeah. wouldn't be 12 tribes without Mexicans. Yeah, yeah. you know. Yeah. Yep. So, you know, you got to be by la raza. Right. I'll pray. And come your Shamrala. <laughs> Fire. Brown pride. Hey, I love that song, bro. I love that song. I'm, wait- I'm waiting for them to do the lyric book. What was it, Eliab? I asked you about that like two months ago. Mm. I told him. I said, I said we'll, push, we'll push the album better if people are actually maybe, you know, had the lyric book with it. It'll give us something extra, a little bit more. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. We could bring it. We could bring it back out. We could bring it back out. Someone said English, please. <laughs> 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 uh, all right, let's jump into this. All right. So last week we were talking about social engineering. We're gonna recap a little bit of what's the what this is. Okay, social engineering. Uh, go ahead and read that first definition for me, officer. Social engineering. The use of centralized planning in an attempt to manage social change and regulate the future development and behavior of a society. Right. So I said that when you read that definition, you know, it seems rather harmless. Right. You right. say, OK, oh, wow. OK, this is what social engineering is. Um, but you have to understand what motivated them to come up with this type of thing, where it came from. So I want to, like, set the set the tone again. For what's here. It says the use of centralized planning. And I said that centralized planning goes into like a confederacy. It's a it's a ruling elect, meaning it's only a certain group of people that have that control. And when we recap uh, the wiki article, not yet, you don't got to pull it up, uh, where it speaks about largely, it's largely done by governments. That's that centralized force. Mm-hmm. That are there to figure that thing out. Um, And then it says, in an attempt to manage social change and regulate the future development and behavior of a society, right? And what would give it even better emphasis if it said a particular society, right? Because it says of a society. Doesn't say of the world, doesn't say of all people, of a society, uh, what's the definition for society? Pull that up. Let me see. You know, I like to... Like Dig to, a little deeper, huh? Yeah, you know. You got it to. It helps me sometimes, you know. Society. The aggregate of people living together in a more or less ordered community. Wow, right? So look at that, right? So letting you know that it's very specific. It doesn't mean all of the world. It doesn't mean all of society. It says the aggregate, right, or the order, or the sum. Of people living together in a more or less ordered community. And when it comes to us, we're a proverb and a byword to them, so we're a less ordered community. Right. Right? Go back to the other definition, and then let's get that Psalms 83. You got that? Yes, sir. All right. So it talks about the use of centralized planning. Centralized planning. And we were speaking, again, just recapping, setting setting the tone. As we continue on with this, so we understand what this social engineering is. Don't get put off by it. This is their scientific, their sociological terms for part of their, what the Bible calls their crafty counsels, their plans to uh, 
socially change us, mm. okay, and regulate the future development and behavior of our society. And then we're going to do the Judah 5 to deal with the social change part after Psalms 83, okay? Yes, so let's get Psalms 83. Go ahead. This is the book of Psalms, chapter 83 and verse 1. Keep not thou silence, O God. Hold not thy peace, and be not still, O God. Right, so we were talking about last week, this thing should fire you up when you hear that. Right. Keep not your silence, God. Hold not thy peace, and be not still, O God. Hey, we got the poster for the men's conference coming out in his flames. You know, oh, Bishop, Bishop Nathaniel the Spirit gave his uh, uh, vision for it. Mm, and, and I'm going to tell you, it deals with this. The dragon is wroth, right? If, if the enemy's not silent, okay, then why should we be silent? Right. We need to speak up against that, right? right. Who will stand up for me against the, the, the evildoers? Mm. So we need to be the ones to bring that out. So when we pray, right, it says, keep not thou silence, O God, hold not thy peace, and be not still. We're asking him to move in Israel, to continue to bring out the, the, what you see with these blitzes, what you see with these uh, hitting these churches, everything that's going on, the uptick of activity, because they're there with their social engineering, constantly trying to, to an attempt to manage the social change within us and to regulate the future development, to avoid what their future is, to try to delay or postpone the inevitable, the inevitable, yeah. right? Because it's a fixed fight that's going on here. So it says, keep not thou silence and hold not thy peace and be not still. Come on. Verse two, for lo, thine enemies make a tumult. And he's saying for lo, because your enemies make a tumult. Your enemies, God, the enemies of your people, all these other nations that he's going to name. He says they make a tumult. Come on. And they that hate thee have lifted up their head. Because they're not being quiet, so we're not going to be quiet. Right. And the Most High is not going to be quiet. You got to fight that what that fire with fire, so to speak, right? Mm -hmm. So we got to come back just as strong. It says our enemies make a tumult. Let me get Psalms uh, 2. We didn't go over that last week, but I had asked you to pull it. Yes, sir. Psalms 2. Verse 1. Mm -hmm. The book of Psalms, chapter 2 and verse 1. Why do the heathen rage and the people imagine a vain thing? Right. It says thine enemies make a tumult. But you got to understand something because this is a multi-pronged attack. We are at war here, a spiritual warfare against spiritual wickedness in high places. And, and we're at war against the craftiness of this social engineering. So when it says in Psalms 83 and 2 that thy enemies make a tumult, you have to understand that that includes those of our own people. That's what Psalms 2 is saying. Right. Right. Read Psalms 2 again. I know you're looking for something. You, the, you get in a second. The book of Psalms, chapter 2 and verse 1. Come on. Why do the heathen rage and the people imagine a vain thing? The heathen are those other nations, and then the people are those of Israel that were confederate as well. It says, and the people imagine a vain thing. Is it in Acts 15 that it talks about the people of Israel with them? I could look. Uh, But uh, go ahead. Can we keep on in Psalms 2. The book of Psalms, chapter 2 and verse 1. Why do the heathen rage and the people imagine a vain thing? The kings of the earth set themselves. The vain thing is that, that goes into what we just said. It's, uh, it, they're trying to put off the inevitability right. of the Israelites returning to power, right? Mm -hmm. That, like you read in Acts 1, will you now restore the kingdom of, uh, uh, of heaven again to right. us, right? right? Will you restore the kingdom to us, mm -hmm. right? It says they imagine a vain thing because they're not going to be able to overcome it. Right. It's vain. It's for naught, even though they do these things. But the reason they're not is, remember, the scripture says, except there be a remnant, we'd all be a Sodom and Gomorrah. So we cannot keep our silence. Read it from the top again. Why do the heathen rage and the people imagine a vain thing? The kings of the earth set themselves and the rulers take counsel together against the Lord and against his anointed saying that's that centralized planning. It says the kings of the earth and the rulers and says, and the people, and against the Lord and his anointed, meaning Christ, mm. first and foremost, right? Saying what? Saying, let us break their bands asunder. Let us break their bands asunder. And normally I'll break this down and I'll show you that. It talks about those brands of brotherhood. But the bands is dealing with everything, meaning our heritage in these scriptures. Everything that we're supposed to live by. That's that social change piece in this definition. Right. They want to manage social change. 
And in doing so, that will help them regulate the future development and behavior of the Israelites. That's what that's going into. Read that verse again. Let us break their bands asunder and cast away their cords from us. He that sitteth in the heavens shall laugh. The Lord shall have them in derision. That uh, okay. So, well, it says the Lord will have them in derision, meaning it's in vain. Uh, go back to Psalms uh, 83. The book of Psalms, chapter 83 and verse 3. They have taken crafty counsel against thy people and consulted against thy hidden ones. They have said, come and let us cut them off from being a nation. Right. So it said, let come. Let us cut them off from being a nation. They said that we are going to manage this social change, and we're going to understand what their motivation was behind it when we read Judith, all right? So part of this crafty council became this social engineering. This is what it became in modern times, all right? All these little things that they did throughout history to us, iconoclasm, slavery, uh misinformation, propaganda, all these things. And in modern times and as things evolved and changed, they got better at it. Yep. I was you know what I was thinking when that thing I was thinking about politics. Yes. Because they push you to be what? Democrat, Republican. It was a comedian that said, Hey, us black people, they said he said, We're not uh we're Democrats just because we don't want to be Republicans. We're not Republican we're not Democrats just because and so what what happens is they have to pick a side, but yet they don't believe everything. They just hey, to me, you know, they're, like society is pushing me to be at a certain side, so I'm gonna push. I'm gonna be on this side, right? You know what I mean? So that's what right. it is. Yeah, and and they do it with less resistance from us, mm -hmm. less rebellion from us. Actually, with much more complicity or mm -hmm. conformity, mm -hmm. right? If we get to normalization later, we'll read that out, and. Uh, they're able to maintain their resources, meaning us, a lot better that way. Mm -hmm. yep. Because Pretty now good. they got us moving in the spirit they want us to move in in the yep. way they want us to move in. Kind of like uh, the Trick Baby as well. Hey, let's take the smartest among them. Let's let's uh, set up a path for them mm -hmm. where for all intents and purposes they're like us. Because if we leave them in the ghetto, right, it says there will be an empowerment yep. to their people. Yep. So they actually look for those of our people. Oh, yeah who would be deemed uh, exceptional in their eyes mm -hmm. and say, okay, we're going to target them for this. Hey, why do you think they always in our neighborhoods when it comes to military recruitment? Yep. Hard body like that. Yeah. Always. Yeah. Hard body like that. Always. They always go to the schools right before. Because yeah. you, you, you're there in high school. You don't know what to do. I don't want to know this. I don't got money That's for high That's part of that social engineering. Hey, if we get them out of high. Listen, most of these kids, yep. they ain't got nothing going for them. They're not going to be able to afford college. There's no scholarships for them. Mm -hmm. So let's go and recruit them for the military. And then they'll be indoctrinated into into the ways of uh the, the social engineered ways that we want. Mm -hmm. We will normalize them and and manage their behavior so that they basically become puppets of us. Right. right? That's very big for uh. For uh, speaking of Puerto Rico, Ephraim. Yeah. Why? Why is it very important? And I always think about that because Ephraim is what a, the leader of the, the Northern Kingdom. Mm -hmm. They're rising up and being the, so they go. They attack them just like they attack Judah. Yep. So when they follow, hey, you know what? I want to be on, on the Marines Corps too. Hey, and it's no it's no coincidence that when, with that Monroe Doctrine, which you've gone over on this show heavily, uh, the Monroe Doctrine very simply being. Uh, their declaration, meaning the United States Declaration, that they have the authority to police the Western Hemisphere. Mm -hmm. But when they say the Western Hemisphere, they don't mean Canada. Mm -hmm. right? I'm pointing up because right, that would be north from us. Yeah, right? Right, right. They don't mean Canada. Yep. Their whole emphasis was on Central, South America, right? what's known as Latin America, mm -hmm. the Caribbean. Yep. That's where their emphasis was. Because they know. That goes back to that crafty council. They said, oh, these are the 12 tribes, and they're right on our doorstep. Mm -hmm. They're on our borders. Hey, just like we Esau bordered the 12 tribes' uh, breakup of their land. I was reading in Joshua how they broke up the land. Yep. And when you look at the maps, you see Esau's borders were right there. Mm. Right? We had our divisions. And then we, I wonder, do I have a map in this one that shows it? Uh... Uh, uh, let me see. Some Bibles will have the map of the twelve tribes' division of the land. Yeah, try to try to look it up. 
and then you'll yeah, see. Yeah, the map, the, where, where are the 12 uh -huh. tribes, and then Esau right and Moab right yeah, there. Yeah, because Edom was down here in the south. Yeah. Uh, this was after the kingdom of David and Solomon. Uh, see if you see one that talks about the 12, like the 12 tribes map. You got it right here. Like, talking about with Edom and yeah. then. Yeah, yeah, that, that, that first, that first, that in that way. first one, yeah. There's one. That's okay, good. yeah, there it is. That, that, yeah, blow that one up. And this is what I'm telling. And this is what I'm talking about. When yep. I, when I discussed the Monroe yep. Doctrine. Okay, so you'll see there, right? Asher, Naphtali, Zebulon, Issachar, Manasseh. Scroll. <laughs> Ephraim, Gad, Dan, Benjamin, Reuben, Judah. Simeon was within the midst of Judah. You'll read this in Joshua, right? Because I'm, I've been reading Joshua. Uh, on and off the past couple weeks. I say on and off because I haven't been consistent every day, <laughs> right? And look where it says just south of Judah, just south of the division of the promised land to the 12 tribes. Mm -hmm. The Edomites were right there. Yep. The Edomites. Yeah, Moab was there in this particular cutout, but the Edomites were right there. And then when you look at the other one, when it was the kingdom of Solomon and David, mm -hmm. uh, Edom still stayed in the south, and I don't think Moab at that point was there when you look at that particular map. Mm -hmm. But Edom was there. So same thing, right? We bordered them. Mm -hmm. So when they did that Monroe Doctrine as part of that crafty council, it was their declaration that they were going to police the borders that were closest to them. That wasn't by some happenstance. They knew who we were. Mm -hmm. They knew who we were, and they said, man, there sure is a lot of them close down there. Mm -hmm. We need to put things in place to make sure that they don't ever remember who they yep. are, right? We're going to jump back in a second. Uh, let's get Judah 5 so that we can make that point so you can understand why they would have this motivation to imagine these vain things. The book of Judah, chapter 5 and verse 20. Yeah. Now therefore, my Lord and governor, if there be any error in this people and they sin against their God, let us consider that this shall be their ruin and let us go up. And we shall overcome them. Right, so they knew the secret formula. They knew the secret source was us following the laws, statutes, and commandments with joyfulness and gladness of heart. Mm -hmm. So they said, hey, it, if, if they sin against their God, then we can destroy them. Mm. Go ahead, read on. Verse 21. But if there be no iniquity in their nation, let my Lord now pass by, lest their Lord defend them and their God be for them. And we become a reproach before all the world. Right. So they said, look, we can't let this go. We can't let this slide. Go back and read that in Psalms 83 again. The and then the other thing I wanted, it wasn't Acts 15. It was Acts 4 and 25. Got but it. You could get that ready. But read Psalms 83 again. The book of Psalms, chapter 83 and verse 3. They have taken crafty counsel against thy people and consulted against thy hidden ones. The crafty counsel is today now called social engineering. Mm. They see, because first they did it. By captivity, displacing us, making it harder, banning. You read in First Maccabees one, yep, uh, forty one on down, banning us from keeping our customs to follow the strange laws of the land. But they did that upon pain of death. Mm -hmm. Now it's not upon pain of death. Now it's manipulated. Yep. Now the black and Hispanic mind is an invention of of the white man, mm -hmm. and all the heathen that are with him, and the supporters of that are our people who are confederate with them in that same way. You read that in Maccabees, you say, yea, many also of the Israelites consented. consented. Yes, yep. sir. Meaning they went with it. Right. So there's nothing new under the sun in this. What they've done is they've just refined it, and they figured out a way to do it on a psychological level with us mm -hmm. that they don't have to exert physical force in order to make it a reality against us. Right. Yep. That's that's what they went into. And the biggest thing is, is it's an influence on other people. They they see these are not only people that are that are uh, just nobodies. These are entertainment people. People on when they do it, they're like, well, I want to do it too. Yeah. I mean, if they're doing it, it must be good because I like their music or you have some kind of tied to them. Yeah. What do they call them? Role models. Yeah, the role models. Right? Yeah. Or, or idols, and they say, hey, these type of people will socialize. And we read that last week yep. when it said, uh, let's put taskmasters over them. Right. And we were talking about how it was of our own people. These people are the same way, except they're not taskmasters that whip us now, mm -hmm. but they're people we idolize, yep. that right. we look up to, that we think are somewhat of note amongst us. Influential. Yeah. Influential. Mm -hmm. That's the big one, yep. influential. And they elicit emotional responses in our people. And they say, hey, they got to be, they're successful. They're mm -hmm. doing all right. So what they're saying, if I want to be like that and have the type of life that they're having, uh, th then let me just follow what they're saying. Right. Yep. And and what Esau does is that, like the scripture says in Psalms, that diligent search. They yeah. searched out what we felt bore, 
and the time of Maccabees, whatever we fell for there, let's do it again. Let's bring that sports back yeah. in there. Yeah. Let's bring the idols, the All entertainment, those things. All and then it's those just things. it just brought back up. Yeah. Can I get a script? Uh, yeah. Finish. Read this again, and then and then you can get yours. Go ahead. The Book of Psalms, chapter eighty-three, and verse three. Read they have up. taken crafty counsel against thy people and consulted against thy hidden ones. To what end? Come on. They have said, "Come and let us cut them off from being a nation." This is basically the same thing like you read in Judith. Hey, let it come. Let us cut them off from being a nation. Let's have them discontinue from their heritage, and we will be able to overcome them. Mm -hmm. Come on. That the name of Israel may be no more in remembrance. Right. So they said that the name of Israel may be no more in remembrance. And this is absolutely what happened. Right. This validates even more that those so-called uh, Jews, the Jewish, mm -hmm. are not our people because it says we will cut them off. It says thy hidden ones, mm -hmm. meaning people wouldn't know who the real Israelites are in these last days, except for that remnant to bring it out, to bring that understanding. And that's why you have in Ezekiel where it talks about the Valley of Dry Bones and their skin was upon them, mm -hmm. right? All those things go into this stuff. That's what I'm saying, man. These people are out there. Especially our people, they, they you you. Let me tell you, these Christian pastors are getting exposed. Mm. What are we only the, two weeks in? It's gonna be the third week. Yeah, oh, but they feeling it. They feeling they it. Feeling hard it. body, mm -hmm. bro. We got that one clip where he said, "My understanding's not there." Mm. This, this was yeah. a pastor no, in the church. Knowledge. Said, "My understanding is not on that on, on, on that my. level. Mm. I can't." I he he said something along the line like, "I can't debate with y'all because my understanding's not there." Mm. That's just showing you that to be a Christian pastor in the United States doesn't take very much. No. You just got to have a nice song and dance. Yeah. And have a nice suit. And guess what? You're going to you're going to tickle the ears. That's it. All you got to do is preach that same prosperity doctrine, mm -hmm. that love doctrine. Make yeah. the people feel good. Make them feel good. Because right? you know, our, peop our people in the last days, they're very hungry. Hey, that's uh, get Isaiah 30 and 8. And then you can get your scripture. I'm sorry. That's Isaiah good. 30 Keep... and 8. The book of Isaiah, chapter 30 and verse 8. Now go, write it before them in a table and note it in a book. Right. So we have the answers to combat this crafty council. This preservation of it is here. That table is this Bible. Remember, we brought out another scripture a few weeks back where it says their table will become a snare unto them. Mm -hmm. Right. So they even in that social engineering process came up with the agent of socialization known as religion which Catholicism is the mother of all Christianity, mm. okay? And they bastardized our Bible. They distorted it, and it became a stumbling block to our people. Why? Read on. In a book that it may be for the time to come forever and ever. Right, because there would be a time to come when this knowledge would come back into the earth full force, right? And thine eyes would see thy teachers. Come on. That this is a rebellious people. Right. That, listen, we first must understand. You got to know who you're going against. Mm. And we understand that when you're dealing with Israel, they are rebellious people. Come on. Lying children. Lying children. That's in our spirits to be that way. Come on. Children that will not hear the law of the Lord. Children that will not hear the law of the Lord. Because that's the issue that they're having when we bring this stuff out. It's all a pretty song to them until we bring out the law. But that's the one thing that makes us peculiar. That's the one thing that makes us different. Come on. Which say to the seer. So this is what our people in their rebellion will say to us. Come on. See not. And to the prophets, prophesy not unto us right things. They say, whoa, 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 whoa. I'm mad that you can see that in the Bible. Mm. I don't want you to see that. Yep. I don't want you to tell me that I can't do this and I can't do that. I don't want you to bring this out, that I shall not covet. That I, that I can't have uh, uh, false idols. Mm -hmm. That I can't have my crucifix. That I can't pray to the saints. My pants. I can't have my pants. Yep. I hey. don't want you to tell me that. Hey, Deacon. Yeah. They'll say, hey, it's some men outside. Don't be afraid of them. The Hebrew Israelites pop up everywhere. Just right. Ignore them. That's what they'll say. Right, right. See not. Don't pay attention to them. Yep. So they say to the seers, see not. And to the prophets, Prophesy what? Come on. Prophesy not unto us right things. This is what they're saying. Don't prophesy us unto right things. They'll call uh, good evil mm -hmm. and evil good. Yep. Come on. Speak unto us smooth things. Prophesy deceit. They said speak unto us smooth things and prophesy deceits. 
That's what you get in the Christian church. That's what you get from these Christian pastors, that love doctrine, that prosperity doctrine. Right. Prophesy deceits. Mm -hmm. Speak unto us smooth things. These hard things, that's rough. Damn, God's in control of life and death? Mm. Is God that kills those little babies? Is God that goes ahead and took my mama when she was young? Gave her horrible cancer and all of that stuff? Without fully understanding the ways of the Lord and how he deals with death and right. with life. Mm -hmm. Remember, he's not he's the God of the living, not of the dead. Right. Yep. All the ways of the Lord are mercy. Yeah. They don't understand those things. Read on. Verse 11. Get you out of the way. Get away from this parking lot. Get away from in front of my church. Get away from in front of my store. Why are you in our neighborhoods? Get you out the way. Come on. Turn aside out of the path. Cause the Holy One of Israel to cease from before us. I don't want the true Messiah. Mm. That's not the image of Christ. Caesar Borgia is. Don't show me that. Not my Jesus. The Holy One of Israel is dealing with the Messiah. And when you preach the Messiah, for as much as these apologists and these Christians try to come with that nonsense, mm -hmm. oh, they don't preach Christ. They're Pharisees because they're preaching the law. We preach Christ all day. Because so long as we're dealing in the volume of the book, you read that in Hebrews 10 and 7, that's dealing with Christ. Because he said, lo, I come in the volume of the book. That's Luke says, right. Moses and the prophets spoke of me because it's written of me. Mm. But they come and they say, no, we don't want that. Don't bring that unto us, right? Come on. Wherefore, thus saith the Holy One of Israel, because ye despise this word. And trust in oppression and perverseness. That's what your people are. This is the pe Listen, because the heathen are doing what they've been programmed to do. Right. Mm -hmm. I mean, I know we all are, but it's a much, much larger offense when you see that it's coming from our people. Yep. Mm -hmm. And here's the caveat with that. You can't just presume that all of them that are against us today will be against us in the future. Right. Nobody yep. knows who that number is. Right. We know that there's a third and there's two thirds. Mm -hmm. We can't go out there and say that all of those that are against us now will always be against us. Mm -hmm. Amongst those. Look at Paul. Saul. He said he persecuted his people. The worst. He goes into that in one of the in one of the in uh, one of his letters. Yep. And he talks about how how evil he was towards Christ. Mm -hmm. How evil he was in oppressing our people. You're actually, and uh, he was pulled from that. You're right. actually right about that because um, I know we had one group that let us go into the church and teach. So they let let us open up, and some people they heard. Some we never know. We never know. Those, some people so, were here. Yeah, exactly. Some, those high calm their spirits, so they say, you know what? Let them in. Let them teach. Uh huh. And you know what I mean? Go ahead. Finish up. Where are you? Uh, verse 12, uh -huh. wherefore, thus saith the Holy One of Israel, because ye despise this word and trust in oppression and perverseness and stay thereon. So, see, here's the part where it becomes an issue. He says, you despise the word, you trust in oppression and perverseness. You trust in the social engineering. You trust in this social construct, mm -hmm. which we'll get into in a little while. You trust in this social construct that they've created. He says, but the issue is you stay on it right when the knowledge has come to you when the holy one of israel has been preached to you when the when the understanding of these scriptures has come out to you you did not leave off from it mm -hmm. you chose that and you trusted that more than what was coming out from your own people who were selling you things that made sense come on verse 13 therefore this iniquity shall be to you as a breach ready to fall and those who stay there on and do not come out of it that their time is their time and chance is going to wither away, and it be meaning they will be given over to a reprobate mind. Right? It's it's as a uh, a breach ready to fall. Come on, swelling out in a high wall, whose breaking cometh suddenly at an instant. Because what he's saying is that you won't know how much how long that window was open for you mm -hmm. when a prophet's been among you and taught this word to you. Right. You might get one exposure, and that was your one chance. Maybe it's two, maybe it's three, maybe it's years later that you repent, but you don't know. Yeah, that grace level is different. For, that grace is different. You know, Everybody has a measure of grace that's given unto them, mm -hmm. and that might have been that one shot. He says, so they, you don't know. It's like the breach in a wall and that thing, you don't know when it's going to, man, I don't know, but I know it's shaky. I know that thing's about to fall down. Mm -hmm. I'm just not sure exactly when. It might stay there good for like another week. And that's what's scary about people. They, 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 they understand it. They're like, you know what? Let me finish my sin and yeah. then come back. 
Hey, you it's like know. brothers who put the donut on the car and then they just don't replace it. And they figure, you don't know. They tell you you might get 50 miles on it. Yeah. Right. You're like, shit, I've been driving with it for three months. Till, till the wheels fall off. <laughs> till the wheels fall off. <laughs> Literally. <laughs> right? Play with fire, though. Right. Right? right. Play with fire. Use that as an exact. Because i seen brothers do that, boy. You throw the donut on and you're like, out of sight, out of mind. Mm -hmm. That thing ain't made for endurance, bro. Right. <laughs> you know? hey, it DJ, has its limits. Here, you back here cutting IT up. <laughs> 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 David got a donut. On He's a, he, damn. <laughs> Just rolling with the donut like tempting. <laughs> yeah. Hey, that's like when Satan said, hey, throw yourself on the rocks. God's going to look out for you. David's rolling in that spirit. <laughs> right, right. So I'm good. Put a tire on your damn car. If you need help, let us know. <laughs> yeah. right. The hell is this? Go, going back to what you were saying about the, uh, the pastors, because the problem with a lot of pastors, they've been trained this way. And I remember in Christianity, when I would ask questions about the Old Testament, this and that, I would get the, the hey, that's done away with, look at here. But that's the trained thing in there. And I remind you of a video that I actually put up, uh, I don't know if you've seen it, I think one of the, the other deacons, or captains, I can't remember, put it up about the five monkeys. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I don't know if we, we, we can watch that, because it's, it's, it's trained... Watch what the monkeys say after this. It's only a minute long. Yeah, I think Bishop was uh, Bishop Yalosa brought this out, right? Okay, yeah, in one, in one that's what it was. So it was very, it 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 hasn't that it has a level of many things that we've been done and got pretty much got slapped in our hands for saying or doing or talking, even as young children. Go ahead and play it. Yeah, that's that pack mentality or herd mentality. Yeah. Yep. A scientist placed four monkeys in a room with a stepladder upon which there was a bunch of bananas. Whenever a monkey went to climb the ladder, the other monkeys in the room were sprayed with cold water. After a while, each time a monkey went for the bananas, the others would attack it to prevent it from doing so. The monkeys learned to never climb the ladder. But then, one of the monkeys was removed, and a new monkey wearing a raincoat was introduced. Naturally, this monkey went for the bananas, and it was customarily attacked and prevented from doing so by the others. This new monkey learned not to climb the ladder. So when another monkey was substituted in and made for the bananas, all the others attacked it, including the one in the raincoat, despite the fact that it had never been sprayed with cold water. A third monkey was substituted in, and then a fourth final monkey. And still, whenever a monkey tried to climb the ladder, the others would prevent it from doing so even though none of them had ever been sprayed with the cold water. When asked why this was, one monkey said, that's just the way it is. That That's that's the answer that I got from a lot of pastors that they would say, that's just the way it is. Like, because when you really pick up this Bible, when you start reading the commandments, you start like, hey, God's really angry for us not keeping the commandments. Yeah. Let's keep these commandments. Oh, no, no, no. A pastor comes, they say, no, that's not a way with. Well, how do you know? That's just the way it is. Because the New Testament, we don't have to keep it. What do you mean? And then you start cherry picking. You get to the whole worship thing, the whole Sunday show and dance and everything. And you forget about what you first read. And you know what? You said cherry picking, man. And that's really what it is. That's really what it is. See, God is an all or nothing thing. You can't cherry pick. Mm -hmm. You know, yep. you can't say I want to do. But Christianity opens the door to that. Yep. And then you'll find your peace in that and you'll say, OK, listen, yeah, you know, all right. It makes me feel good. I get to do these things. Right. But over here, I can't do that. Right. Mm -hmm. And that's why they came up with all this. And, the, the, and you know, that thing was driven largely by people saying, OK, I agree with this much, but not this much. All right. So let me create a. A, a denomination that does this right. and that's the same thing you see in israel with different camps right mm -hmm. there's a camp that allows multiple wives there's a camp that allow you to not wear fringes there's a camp edomites, that allow women yep. yeah there's a camp that allow other nations edomites mm -hmm. in right so they'll roll that way and you'll find your flavor yep and you'll roll that way. that reminded me of, have you guys seen maze runner no i i just the previews okay <laughs> maze runner was a good movie uh -huh. but it's the same thing they put them all in a it was like a maze on the outside uh -huh. and in the, in the middle it was uh basically like a a community mm -hmm. and the maze was shut down at the end of every night so what they they would let someone come up once a month someone would come up and basically when the last guy got put up he was trying to leave the maze and they told him that there was rules behind them going out there it was mm -hmm. dangerous they tried to stop mm -hmm. him and then when he was trying to find ways to escape they were doing the same thing. They were shutting down his ideas. Yeah. 
Yep. So you get that herd mentality that happens quite a bit, and that's part of that social engineering. And then it's set on its access, so it keeps going and going. Yeah. You were going to bring a scripture, you said. No? Yeah, you good. You sure? Yes, sir. Oh, okay. So I was dealing with Psalms 2, and I wanted to show you that the people, right? So let's go to Psalms 2 again, and then we're going to go to Acts 4 and 25, so that you know that the people's talking about Israel, all right? The book of Psalms, chapter 2 and verse 1. Why do the heathen rage and the people imagine a vain thing? Right, so why do the heathen rage and the people imagine a vain thing? Go to Psalms 4 and, I'm sorry, Acts 4 and 25. The book of Acts, chapter 4 and verse 25. Who, by the mouth of thy servant David, has said, Why did the heathen rage and the people imagine vain things? So he's basically quoting Psalms 2 here, right? Come on, read. Verse 26. The kings of the earth stood up, and the rulers were gathered together against the Lord and against his Christ. For of a truth against thy holy child Jesus, whom thou hast appointed both. Both who thou has anointed, who thou has anointed both Herod and Pontius Pilate with the Gentiles and the people of Israel were gathered together. Right. So it's letting you know. See, in that verse, it's letting you know that it's the people is going into Israel. When it says the people imagined a green, a vain thing, mm -hmm. the people is going into Israel, the heathens, the other nations, the rulers with them. And then when it says the people imagine a vain thing, those people's dealing that, yea, many also of the Israelites. Like, yeah, people are commenting. They've seen the footage of, of all the camps going out to these churches and the type of backlash that they're getting right. from mm -hmm. these so-called Christian-loving pastors. Mm -hmm. Right? From these, How come they don't do that when freaking the Mormons come through their neighborhoods? Yep. How come they ain't rolling like that? They bring another doctrine. Bean pies and right? their bow ties and... Right. What do they do? The little letter, little letters that uh, they pass elder, out. Elder, elder. Uh, the Watchtower. I'll never forget, bro. I don't know what I don't know what was going on with my mother back then. All right. So so. Uh, I'm gonna tell you my Mormon story. Oh, the Mormons. Okay. <laughs> I'll tell you, I'm gonna tell you okay. my Mormon story. Did I, I told you this story right with the Mormons? Um, I can't remember. Oh, right. I, that's not, has, that's has, not the touchy feely group. Uh, no, it has a happy ending though. No, that's the the the, the Church of Latter Day Saints that they okay. say black people are black because they're cursed. Yeah. 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 Okay. But they, but they do say Gad is the Israelites. That's the, okay. So that's part of their ministry. They say Christ came here after he ascended, and he taught, uh, he taught the northern kingdom here. Okay. Right. Anyway, so I, rem I grew up in the projects in the Bronx, Gun Hill Projects, Gun Hill Houses, all right? And basically it was, it was hood. It was, you know, like yep. we grew up through the crack epidemic. I remember the crack files and the stairs, all that stuff. Right? Mm -hmm. it, was, it, was, it, was, it was rough. Uh, and I say that not to boast of it being rough. Those things, that's carnal b BS. I say that to say that these white boys came into the hood, <laughs> right, yeah. to yeah. preach Mormonism. They they went, they didn't give a, they didn't give a damn. They came into Gun Hill houses, mm. all right, and they came in. And I don't know, man. Like uh, you know, we were raised Catholic at that time. You know, I had no choice, so yeah. I was Catholic. That's what my mom said we were. That's what we were doing. Right, and. They came knocking on, I don't know if she was bored. Maybe there was nothing on HBO that night. I have no idea. <laughs> Elder Tuft and Elder Bacon. I'll never forget their names. Bruh. <laughs> Bacon? Bruh. The Elder Hell Tuft and Elder Bacon. Bacon. Tuft, mm. T-U-F-T. Yeah. And Elder Bacon. Tuft Bacon. Okay. Mm. The whitest white boys you'll ever see. Yeah. Right. Right? I've seen it. And listen, I'm not talking about white, like, just a color. Yeah. All right? Because I know that I'm light-skinned. Right. Some yeah. people might hear me saying that. And it don't register with you because yeah. your mind's not in the right place yet. Yeah. These were the epitome of white boys. And when I say the epitome, I mean you look up, you know, white and, and they yeah. acted like it. They spoke, They were out of place. All right. They came from They Montana. were wearing their short sleeve white shirt with their little thing, their little name badges. A little tie on. Yeah, right. They had their bikes and all that. Right. And they came and they started talking. And my mom let them in the house. And I'm looking at my mom and I said, look, my mom. Man, we used to get beatdowns if anybody came knocking. Like if, yeah. like if, like if a friend's mom came to knock, mm -hmm. like to say, "Oh, let me come and visit," you know, uh, uh, so and so's mom. My mom would not open the door, tell them, G "Get the hell out!" You know, you're rude for just popping in, and then beat the crap out of us because she said that we encouraged that. <laughs> yeah, you know, right. So she let these Mormons in, and I want to say it must have been two separate sessions, right? And I remember my, I had my friend Ke Kendall, Kendall Jackson. He lived on the seventh floor. That was my boy. He also went to the Catholic school I went to. And he happened to be over. So we there, and we listening 
they're talking about Mormonism <laughs> and Christ came. They're showing us the pictures, yep. how he came to the, the, to, the, to the Gadites. And, you know, I didn't know they were Gadites then. I said those are the Indians. And he's showing us this and everything like that, right? And I think she let them come twice. And then one wow. day, I don't know, like a, like a, a flip switch. And they came to the house, right? I'm going to change her name. I'm going to change my mom's name. Let's say it was Sue, right? And they were like, hey, Sue, it's us. It's Elder Tuft and Elder Bacon. Why won't you let us in? You know, why won't you let us come back? And they wouldn't leave. So I guess she flipped. This is the happy ending. Right. She opened the damn door and she cursed them out. We Catholic in this house. Blah, blah, blah. <laughs> well, she cur- She told them all types of She No, she cursed us. <laughs> Crap out of them, boy. Hey, all praises, yeah. all praises. Bro, she sent them running down the hallway. I remember that project. Up. It was, I don't know, I want to say maybe it was like f- at least 15 to 20 apartments on each floor. So it was a long hallway with the elevator lobby. And, man, they went running down the hall with their bikes because, you know, they're always on their yeah, little the bike. bicycles. Right, and stuff right. like that. But I say all that to say, right, they, you got these Christian pastors coming against us. I'm just sharing a little tidbit of, of my Mormon experience. Mm-hmm. They they have the audacity to come into the hoods and our people don't. My mom even entertained yeah. them for a little while mm-hmm. because they wouldn't go if they were getting their asses handed to them. Right. Like the way these people been coming at us, our own people. But see the distortion that we have. Mm-hmm. Right. So we, 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 we're part of that socially engineered process yep. where we're quick to see like this monkey example ourselves as our own enemy mm-hmm. instead of collectively, you know, figuring something out here. Right. Like, mm-hmm. damn. You know, and you know what it is. They they bring when they bring that image. It is we are desensitized to see it, and they're going to kind of like it calms our spirit. Like, oh, they're good. They're here for good. But it's it's evil. It's the, it's the reverse. We got to see it as that these guys are coming to bring evil into us. Yeah, spreading that doctrine and keep continue bringing them brainwashed. Yep. You know. Yep. Yep. Uh, you sure you don't want to bring your scripture? I'm going to go back to articles and stuff now. <laughs> I'm done with Psalms scriptures. 82. Okay, go ahead. Psalms 82. Bring it yeah, Psalms 82 real quick. Bring it out. Elder Tuft and Elder Bacon. <laughs> Elder Bacon. <laughs> Yo, how old so, were you? So, so like, I might have been, I was, I was probably, I don't know, maybe 12, because I think I was still in oh, Catholic. Sad, okay. I think I was still in Catholic school. Yeah, mm-hmm. Catholic I went to Catholic school until eighth grade. What are you, like 13 in eighth grade? 12, 13? 12. Yeah. You're like 12. Yeah, so it was like seventh, eighth grade. 12, 13, yeah, so. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and, uh, yeah, yo, yo, it's straight up. All I gotta do is tell, like, like, uh, like, like, if I tell my younger brother, yo, Elder Tuft and Elder Bacon, we'll just start cracking up, bro. <laughs> like that thing is, <laughs> we were, yo, and I'm, I'm damn near forty five years old. I still remember that thing, like, <laughs> like plain as day, bro. That's I remember wild. that thing, plain as day, man. No, bro, they, they walk through the hood with impunity, bro. Bro. I couldn't go to some neighborhoods that, that, that they went to. And they, you, you think about it, our people scared to go to camp at times. Right. That's right, wild. Right, right. I want I want to broach that, but yeah, yes, yeah, yeah. there's that too. <laughs> no, it, it, mm. here in Phoenix, you see that when I first came here to Phoenix, that you didn't see them in West. Well, Texas. it's a little different though. We know our people don't give a crap about us. Right, right, they, right. They they, <laughs> they they think they Jesus right. and that they yeah. look like Jesus, so they said they ain't gonna hurt Jesus. Right. So that's why they walk through the hoods like that. You mm. know what I'm saying? That's yes, why sir. they that's why they have no fear. They'll come in there with their yep. bikes and all of that. And they still do it because because nobody does it to them because that's white Jesus. Yeah. Hey, that's that's the social engineering in all aspects because that's even on their side. Yep, that's yep. heavy. Yeah, I remember coming out. Bro, here. we'll beat up the Moabite to get the free Chinese food. Yep, uh, that was a thing. I don't know if that was a thing where you got, but that was a thing. They wouldn't come to the projects after a while because you would order. And then you beat them about up the fat the, the, the delivery. Yeah. You would order yeah. and then beat them up and take the Chinese food. I never mm. did that. Yeah. No, I never did. But I knew a lot of people who did. Yep. I knew a lot of people who did. So they wouldn't. They wouldn't come. They they would meet you at the outskirts of the project. They wouldn't come in Moab. Wow. The, the Moab delivery guy. Dang. I remember that. Hey, that's like that taxi story you told us a while back. How the taxi stopped coming to get y'all too. A little taxi service y'all used to call late at night. And oh like, yeah. When somebody called, yep, and then yep. Ten of y'all go jump in. Yep, yep. They stopped. Yep, they wouldn't. They wouldn't come because they knew that you was not gonna pay your fare. You, you know, you were gonna wow. overload the car. You were gonna run out. You know, so they were like, "Damn, we just guess what? We just ain't rolling over there anymore." Yeah, or yellow working. cabs. They wouldn't. They wouldn't go to the Bronx. Mm. I remember, wow. boy. Sometimes, boy, it's late at night. You were hanging out. You want to catch a cab home. Good you luck. Walk, you walk well. Good luck, bro. Bro, they would go to Brooklyn before they went to the Bronx. And I'm sorry, I think Brooklyn's way worse than the Bronx. But anyway, I digress. <laughs> go ahead, bring your scripture out. Get, uh, Psalms 82 and then uh, get verse 5. You said 82 and 5? 82 and 5. 
Psalms 82 and verse 5. They know not, neither will they understand. Because we were going into it earlier about the social engineering, everything that's happening to our people. So they know not, neither will they understand. Our people won't even understand what's going on. Read. They walk on in darkness. All the foundations of the earth are out of course. So all the foundation of the earth are out of course. That's the social engineering. That's yeah. literally the social engineering yeah. in effect. Yeah, that's that That's that social change, and they're trying to regulate that future development. Right. They're trying to regulate that future development of us, excuse me, as a people. That's it, that's it you got yes, on that? Yes, sir. Let's go to the wiki on social engineering. We're going to, we're, we're actually still in the recap, and we're almost an hour in. <laughs> what the hell is this? Yeah. It heats up at I, the I, end. I, I ain't getting through everything today. I ain't getting through all of it. Maybe. Let me see. All right, social engineering. Pol uh, political science? Yeah, that's it. Okay. Social engineering. Go ahead, read that. Social engineering is a top-down effort. That top-down, meaning, remember how we read the kings and rulers, right. right? Telling you it comes from the very top or that or that uh, centralized planning. Come on. Effort to influence particular attitudes and social behaviors on a large scale. Th so they do it through influence now. Mm -hmm. Once it used to be by, by the sword... By pain of death, now it's done influentially or persuasively because we're going to lead into the video, the article and the video that we're going to watch in a moment. So they would influence and get me the scripture about the popular persuasions. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, just have it ready. Uh, so go ahead. Influence particular attitudes and social behaviors on a large scale. Read on. Most often undertaken by government. Uh, most often undertaken by governments. Governments, big ruling elects, meaning it's not conspiracy theories. This is done at the highest levels. Come on. Uh, most often undertaken by governments, but also carried out by media. But also carried out by media. Academia. Acadi meaning the school systems. Mm -hmm. So media deals with entertainment. It deals with the news. It deals with social media. It deals with uh, uh, any type of literature that you read, all forms of media, radio, whatever it is, and academia, meaning the school systems. Mm. They're all geared and trained to influence particular attitudes, meaning very spe specific, and social behaviors on a large scale. The attitude they want to change is ours. Right. Blacks, Hispanics, Native Americans, they did it with the Indian schools to gag. Right. And if you notice, media, academia, these are these are areas where we spend a lot of time. Big time, where we spend the bulk of our time. Right. The way we spend. You know, you think that when you're there scrolling through those reels mm -hmm. on Instagram or TikTok or even Facebook, wherever it is. Mm hmm and this is why the script, you get the scripture talks about evil communication, corrupts good manners. Yes, sir. Right? That's social engineering. It uh, what's being ha what's happening there is you're being influenced by what you see, you're being programmed by what you see. I was I didn't bring it out because it had too many bones for it to make sense, but I was reading an article that it says why propaganda works, and one of the things that they did remember the diligent search that Esau does. One of the things that they did was they studied and they realized that even educated people, though it's a little harder. When I say educated, meaning people who uh, don't go along so easily with everything else, they have the ability to question what's in front of them. Mm -hmm. um, they said just by merely saying something false multiple times influences you to change the way you see it. And the way your mind works, you start to rationalize it and you'll believe it. That's heavy. And they said it, they've done it over and over again. And even people who may question it. And they said all it takes is as little as two exposures to something false for you to start to consider that it might be true. Mm. That's how powerful the mind is. I've said yep. this before. The mind, which is that heart that the Bible talks about, that's where that soul resides. Right. Right. That's why they can't map it. They can't fully understand it. You know, a, a lot of brain surgery leaves you with, with some sort of side effect. You're never the same again mm -hmm. because they've disrupted the place where the Most High has decided to store your consciousness, which is your soul, who you really are. Right. And um, they say that all it takes is as little as two exposures to something false. For you. So they said that they've done stuff. The first time, you'll write it off as yep. BS. And the second time, you'll start to consider. And this can happen verbally. 
This can happen. You see it in the media, academia, whatever else. There's another saying that they say, a lie told often enough becomes the truth. Mm -hmm. A lie told often enough becomes the truth. And what's behind that saying is the psychology of how we embrace and accept things. Mm. And you'll hear things and you'll see stuff. You'll see it with health misinformation. You'll see it with all types of things. And then, you know, so much information is thrown at you that it now becomes so difficult to discern what's the truth, what's not, what's valid, what isn't. Mm -hmm. You know? So it's it's yeah. amazing. They say prop the, the reason propaganda still exists is because it works. And it doesn't That's take heavy. a lot to work. That's it, heavy. It doesn't take a lot what's to work. What's crazy is if your parents are already tricked and believing it, and you start raising your child that they have the same mindset – it's very hard to change. It gets reinforced yeah, it just, because we might not get to it. So this might be yep. the part where we wind up going on, on the next show that I, that I wind up hosting. Mm -hmm. That's the agents of socialization. Yep. And they understand that the family structure is the first and most important and yep. the foundational one that all of us uh, have to pass through before you get into the school system, before you even get exposed to the churches, to the, to the media, the academia, the, before yep. you get exposed to all of that is right. the family. That's the monkey thing where they can yeah. change our monkeys. But because they've set this thing in motion, even though they've never experienced, they'll say the same thing mm -hmm. the and they'll is. teach the same thing. Each of them learn that behavior. And some of them never even got wet or never even experienced. It got to the point where none of them even yep. got wet. Right. And they went with it. That's heavy, though, because in uh, Deuteronomy, it says, teach thy sons when thou rises up, when yep. thou sittest down. Yep. So the the Most High understands the purpose behind teaching the children to reinforce it. Yeah, it says when you're by the way, when you sit is by the way, when you're here, when you're there. You always got to be showing your children. Right. Because... They're always programming us. But the heavy thing was the propaganda, and it said, like, it, it, because it, we think propaganda and we think on a large scale, like from the governments, mm -hmm. but it can be as simple as somebody telling you a lie, and if you keep saying it, hey, it's kind of like, uh, was it, was it Shag? It wasn't me. Right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And so you just never admit it. And you keep saying it wasn't me. It wasn't me. And yeah. you'll have you'll have you'll 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 have the woman like actually wondering if she saw what she saw. Right. You right, know what yeah. I'm saying? Yeah. Like it'll it'll go that way. Yep. Um, that comes from that same type of psychology and stuff like that. Hey, so it, you you keep putting it out there, and your mind starts to embrace it, and you start to consider it, and you start to infer emotions and rationalization to it, to to say that this must be true. Then. Mm -hmm. That's no heavy. matter how obvious it is that it's not. That's heavy. Yeah. Yeah, and then they when it was crazy is that when, as us as as the Israelites are learning the Bible, like you were speaking last week about your daughter coming back to you because you you've already taught her a certain way. So if she sees see something at school, and she comes back to you, I want to you know she goes back to the scripture. She's like, wait a minute, I'm hearing this at the school, and then let's go to this scripture. Okay, so yeah. she's kind of fighting. But you, but you know spirit. what? But that's that's learned behavior. Yep. Mm -hmm. You know, yes, the, the you know obviously the Most High is gonna be the one that gives the increase to yep. all. Um, so even dealing with that situation with my daughter, mm -hmm. I'll give you an example. Yeah, that's stuff that we have to stay on as parents. So she's yep. on summer break now, mm -hmm. and you know she loves the tablet, and it's innocent enough. We check her, you know, like mm -hmm. as far as what she's doing on her tablet, and um, but it's a lot. So yeah. I told her, I said, hey, I said, next week, you know, we're going to go to the library. I said, two things. I said, you're going to pick a book. I said, and y'all want you to read a few books over the summer. Keep your reading going. Right. And I understand she might. that That's for her. She'll get to pick yeah. something that she wants to read. Right. right. I'm obviously, with my approval. Right. Okay. Mm. It's nothing too crazy. Let me see what's in there. And I said, and I also. Right. I'm giving her two chapters a day. Mm -hmm. I said, I want you to read two chapters in the Bible a day. And write your summary. She was doing it last summer, and then, like, towards the end, I kind of stopped enforcing it. Mm -hmm. And write your summary. And, hey, no pushback. She was with it. Yeah, Dad, you know, there's a website that I use that has questions, and then I type the summary, and then I write it, and whatever, you know. And then she asked me for, like, uh, a new Bible, and she was like, hey, I like this Bible. I had, like, the samples for some new Bibles we put up on OR, and she was like, hey, I like this one. I said, all right. I said, I'm going to give it to you. You start using that one. You're going to stay doing your scriptures and your summary. I don't want you. Remember, because it says of much idleness, right, comes evil. evil. Right. Yep. So I want them to do that. So going to your point is it's an active thing you got to do. It's not mm -hmm. just read yep. precepts to them. I've said this before. I see little kids that can quote precepts, yep. but they don't understand. Right. Yeah. It's, 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 that's not impressive to me. It's cute, right? Yeah. Oh, look, he's four and he's quoting scriptures. Mm -hmm. Oh, look, he's five and he's doing this. They, they, they ain't got nothing in there. Yep. Mm-hmm. But my, my my satisfaction, my gratification was the example I gave last week. Yeah. Yeah. And she was able to make that connection herself. But that's not by accident. 
that's that that's that Deuteronomy yep. Yep. being applied, mm-hmm. right? Don't just show some answer those questions. Give them that information. Mm-hmm. You know, move forward in those type of things. You know, sometimes I'm real busy, man. Like the other day, she came to me. She's like, Daddy, I have a question. And I was already kind of on guard because I was like focused on what I'm doing. Mm-hmm. And, you know, so I thought it was going to be something like trivial. And it was a biblical question. And this was something different, like mm-hmm. another incident. Yep. And I was like, wow, OK, you know, it's starting to take effect. And, you know, it takes a, it takes a, a, a tribe to do it. So I know it's the children's classroom. I know it's her being around. She's in the dance thing. Right. You know, all those things make a difference going back to like kind of counter programming. Yep. Like, so they're trying to socially engineer us to normalize us to, to their society, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. To their social constructs. We as parents, as family being that first line of defense and their first exposure, that's why it says train up a child when they're young. Right. Okay? That's heavy. When they're young. Don't wait till it's late when they're young. Mm-hmm. Yeah. After a time, they'll get that aha moment. Aha. Now I know why I was reading this, why I was mm-hmm. doing this. And that spirit just hits them. But it it, it's, it, it takes it take a while, too. But it's just it's that 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 battle that we struggle yeah. With that, trying to change us, you know what I mean? You, you're, you know, the public school is just, they have their own agenda. So he's yeah. kind of like, we got to guard ourselves. Yeah, they, they all do. They all do. Uh, so it says carried out by media, academia, the school system, come on. Or private groups. Or private groups. Or private groups. Letting you know that even beyond government, there's private, there's groups. private groups. There was a documentary one time with... Uh, and they were talking to you know different people in the in the black community. Uh, KRS One was one of them, mm-hmm. and he gave the example. I'm gonna give you the example for the private groups. I thought it was great when he said he said, "Look, man, it's like you go to uh, Burger King or McDonald's, mm-hmm. and you say I want to see the manager. So they bring you the general manager, right? Mm-hmm. They bring you the top manager, yep. right? And he says, you know, that's like the president. That's your government. Yep. So you think that that's the guy? And he says, No, 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 no. I want to see the guy behind this guy. And that's those private groups. That's yeah. the that's the there's something more there where agendas are pushed. You know, they have a lot of different names, Trilateral Commission, Bilderberg Group, Illuminati, mm-hmm. all that yep. stuff like that. That's all contrived from Masons, that's all contrived from conspiracy theory stuff. But there are private groups. Mm-hmm. Right? Uh Bishop Nathaniel recently brought out the thing with uh Sam Kestenbaum. Yep. And he was saying how this this interview is not going to be published. Right. This was more for a private group that wanted some answers. Pulse checking. And, and yeah. yeah, yeah. And then they ask a certain questions that you're like, mm, okay, why do you need to know that? And you and you you, you we catch up on it because we understand yeah, we yeah. understand because they want to use do. that information to modify yeah. their engineering if they need to, mm-hmm. so that they can go ahead and continually uh, uh, produce this stuff. So, what is their aim? Go ahead. In order to produce desired characteristics in a target population. Those desired characteristics is sinful behavior. Mm. You read that when you read. Uh, let's let's get that at first Maccabees because I'm, I'm, we're not going to read the whole thing. Did you want the uh, evil communication? Oh, yes. Get that from the media perspective. Yes. The book of First Corinthians chapter 15 and verse 33. Be not deceived. Evil communications corrupt good manners. Right. So the exposure to these things. So what the, the point I was making when I asked them to bring the scripture is that you go into, you know, and you're watching these reels and you're watching all this stuff and you may think it's innocent enough, mm-hmm. but it's 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 affecting you. Right. Mm-hmm. Remember how uh, Christ, when he was battling uh, Satan, said a uh, uh, man should not live by bread alone. Right. Right. Um, when he was being tempted in, in the wilderness, mm-hmm. and uh, but by every word of God, right? Yeah. So you have to feed that spirit. That goes into the programming we need to get from the Bible in order to maintain and nourish your spirit. Mm-hmm. You can't feed your spirit bread. Just like you got to drink water, just like you got to eat bread, right? You got to be able to feed your spirit and sustain yourself. That's something that you can't be without. Mm-hmm. And if you're without it for too long, that's when the spirit starts to die. Mm-hmm. That's when the spirit starts to die. Just like you can go a certain amount of days without food, certain amount of days without water, they say, before you start having issues, right, right. that lead up to death. And even mm-hmm. that, there's a progression. The more you're away from this and you're not nourishing your spirit, the 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 more you'll start to see things pop up in you. And all of us can say we've experienced it. And you'll be like, damn, what the hell yeah. is wrong with me? Mm-hmm. What the hell is this? I know better. What the damn? You stray from this, you stray from that nourishment, and start. Because, like, you know, you go without food for a few days, you're not going to die right away. Nope. 
but you, you'll start to see the effects of it, right? Start getting right. weak. Start getting weak. You start getting irritable. Your mood changes, all sick. types of stuff, right? Mm-hmm. Same thing with, with the spirit. So the impact of communication is there in you. So read the scripture again. The book of 1 Corinthians chapter 15 and verse 33. Be not deceived. Evil communications corrupt good manners. Right. Evil communications corrupt those good manners, those good things, which is the law. And when you're there and, and it's literally they have algorithms that will continue to show you things and bring things up and so on. And so and like I said, sometimes I love it. Right. I'm like, oh, I didn't know I needed that. Yeah. Sell me that. Or, right. you know, oh, damn, this is another interesting video. I'm looking at something on fitness or whatever. But they also use that information to social engineer. It's like the ex machina clip that we showed last week. Right. Mm-hmm. And where they said, you know, he says, you know, they were mm-hmm. thinking and they used it to sell stuff to you. Mm hmm. He goes, but what it really told us is how people were thinking. Right. And that information is much more valuable. And, and he shows you the, the artificial intelligence brain that he made from that data. Mm-hmm. He made a mind that's symbolic of this, the desired characteristics. He made a mind based on what the collective was thinking and said, this is what society is really about here. Right. And you're going to, and, and, and this is, he made a brain. He made a brain from it. You know, they, they talk about a brain trust or whatever. And that's what you see going on with this social engineering. So evil communication, you got to be mindful of the stuff you feed yourself and what you watch yourself. Because their goal is to produce desired characteristics in a target population. Let's go to uh, First Maccabees now. 1 and 41. And then we'll jump uh, to 49. Oh, that's right. I know we got the call. Let me read this scripture and then we'll take the call. The book of 1 Maccabees, chapter 1 and verse 41. Moreover, King Antiochus wrote to his whole kingdom that all should be one people and every one should leave his laws. So that so all the heathen agreed according to the commandment of the king. Right, because they wanted desired characteristics and they didn't care what these other nations were doing. Their focus was the Israelites. Come on. Yea, many also of the Israelites consented to his religion and sacrificed unto idols and profaned the Sabbath. For the king had sent letters by messengers unto Jerusalem and the cities of Judah that they should follow the strange laws of the land. Right, so this was a very direct decree. This was an edict that was put. But now the way they do it is by influence. So they'll do it in social media. They'll use your your icons, your role models to put this type of information out. What is the reason why? Jump to verse 49. Verse 49. To the end, they might forget the law and change all the ordinances. To produce desired characteristics. And those desired characteristics was that we would forget the law and change the ordinances, change our heritage. Why? Because just like we read in Judith 5, it said, if we are in sin, we can be overcome. Mm. But if we are not and we follow after our God, it says, you better leave them alone mm-hmm. because you're not going to be able to overcome them. Uh, okay. Okay. I don't need the deterministic phenomenon. Let me get. Oh, before we do that, uh, we'll take the caller. So, <laughs> who do we who do we got on the line? I have a sister from North Carolina, shalom, sir. Deacon. Shalom, shalom, sis. Uh, what's your name? This is Sister Dina from Carolina School. Sister Dina, uh, Most High Christ bless you. Welcome to the Power Hour shalom, Plus. Shalom. Most High Christ bless. You were speaking about evil communication, and just this evening, there's an ad. um, It's a YouTube ad, and it came on it saying 13-year-old trans girls in California can now have double mastectomies. Wow. So they're definitely targeting the children. Wow. So you know you know what a mastectomy is? That's when you cut your boobs off. Oh wow! Yeah, so they usually do that like uh, in cases of breast cancer. Right. 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 Now there's they're making it a what oh, would, wow. what they would call an elective surgery, meaning you choose to do it, <sighs> and they're allowing people as long as 13 to make that decision for themselves without wow. a guardian. Yeah, that's I would imagine that sounds like California to me. That's yeah. wild. That sounds like California to me. Right, and then so it's subtle. They'll do it in an ad. 
you might not catch it as your child is watching something. Right. And then they get some spirits on them because of the influence in school or whatever it is. Mm -hmm. And all this stuff goes out the window and they move. I'm telling you, we got to continue to combat that stuff. Thank thank you, sister. I appreciate, I appreciate the calling. That's insane. Yes, wow. You know what's crazy is that... Absolutely. Most high Christ bless. You know, you know what's crazy is that a lot of times... Hey, we've all done it. We do you do things when you're young and you regret them. Like for example, a lot yeah, of us yeah. got uh, uh, got tattoos. Well, you know, and that's the argument you know? that they say in allowing these kids to do that is like, hey, you know that you've done some simple things when you were a kid yeah. that later you regret. Right. And now they're doing it to the extent of stuff that's irreversible, or they would need expensive yeah. reconstructive surgery or mm -hmm. something like that. Should they go another way, right? Like as a child, you're fickle. You're not, you know. You haven't really understood where where you are. You don't even places. understand life. Yeah. No. Yeah. No. Not by any means. You know. I mean, you're a little f better off if if you're fed the scriptures. But even right. then, you're still, you know. That's why we encourage. You know, if you're under eighteen, like you know, don't don't break bread. You know. Right. Like you know, consider. Mm -hmm. You know what that you got to be able to remember. It says uh, examine Take yourself. It right. Let a man examine himself. Right. And let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. You know, mm -hmm. a child can't do that. Right. So why put that on them? You know, so there's a lot. There's a lot to consider when it comes to that sort of stuff. That's insane. I actually, had a scripture right quick. If go we ahead. Go to it. Uh, Ephesians five, uh, six and twelve, because we can really understand that when we go through these things, you know, it started at eleven. It started at eleven because when we're talking about the when we, you know, go, go ahead and read it. The book of Ephesians, chapter six and verse eleven. Put on the whole armor of God that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. So that battle that we struggle each and every day, when we read the commandments and then we, we, we see things like that we saw on Facebook, all those things, you're trying to guess or balance what's right. Well, well it's, this is saying this and that's saying that, but they're allowing... Uh, my my buddy that got close to the school to have their rights, mm -hmm. you know what I mean, quote unquote. And then you kind of like uh, you 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 struggle with that. You, under, you but what happened is the society wants to keep you here, but when you're spiritually minded, you understand that the kingdom is bigger than this this right here. Yeah, that's yeah. The, that government. I'm, that's I'm, I'm smirking it. because we're, we're going to talk about that when we get to social behavior, where it talks about reflective and impulsive mm -hmm. behavior, and and uh, that's that's ultimately where. Excuse me, where, where we have to move to because that's really the only way to kind of combat this. You can't just think because you're aware of yep. it. See, I'm going over this topic because a lot of people never maybe have never heard this term. Yep. And But what you have to understand that you experience this term. Even though you've never heard this term, you've never heard this strategy that they have, mm -hmm. right? But each of us experience it every day, whether, you're, whether you know what it's called or not. They know not. Neither will they understand. Yeah. So we, we're all socially engineered mm -hmm. yep. it's just are you going to be engineered by the creator right yep. that made you to be a certain way and that commanded you to be a certain way that gave those laws statutes and commandments only to you mm -hmm. and none else right or are you going to be uh a puppet of what the heathen wants you what the white man wants you to be right and continue on the status quo right so you got to ask yourself that question um hey and you know what uh your passport's too now. It says a child can be male, female, or gender X wow. with no medical documentation. Wow. That's wild. You just get to pick it and put it on the passport. Mm. So it's a lot of craziness going on out there, and that's part of this social engineering. And, and, and it also goes – within social engineering, there's multiple strategies that are deployed, right? There's creating these social constructs. There's um, – normalization of certain behaviors mm -hmm. okay uh let's get the article about the brain hacks and you know what let's just jump to the video about persuasion let's do that science of persuasion and then uh you got that uh, scripture for when we're done with that about popular persuasions yes sir okay all right uh we'll play some of this I, I I didn't go through all of it. I, f I didn't realize it was 12 minutes. We're not going to watch 12 minutes of it. But let's play some of it so you can see some of these things. All right. I probably should have screened it more. 
we could jump to certain parts. But we could play a few minutes of it and just see what's going on there. Are you going to play it? <laughs> it's on the way. got no volume is there no sound on it did we not check it researchers have been studying the factors that influence us to say yes Researchers have been studying the factors that influence us to say yes to the requests of others for over 60 years. And there can be no doubt that there's a science to how we are persuaded. And a lot of this science is surprising. When making a decision, it would be nice to think that people consider all the available information in order to guide their thinking. But the reality is very often different. In the increasingly overloaded lives we lead, more than ever, we need shortcuts or rules of thumb to guide our decision making. My own research has identified just six of these shortcuts as universals that guide human behavior. They are reciprocity, scarcity, authority, consistency, liking, and consensus. Understanding these shortcuts and employing them in an ethical manner can significantly increase the chances that someone will be persuaded by your request. So stop. So I've been in sales trainings where they speak about this stuff, right? right? And yeah. this is where he says, you know, uh, you can use it ethically, right? And try to persuade people. Mm -hmm. And they say, versus selling to them, if you can, if you can master these, you'll be successful in whatever uh, business or employment endeavor uh, that you're trying to put forth that deals with having to get people to say yes. Right. Right? Go ahead. Let's take a closer look at each in turn. So the first universal principle of influence is reciprocity. Simply put, people are obliged to give back to others the form of behavior, gift, or service. Right, so for example, I say, hey, uh, Issy, uh, let's go out to eat my treat. But we're inclined to want to uh, reciprocate that. Mm -hmm. And you'll be like, okay, I'll get you next time. Mm -hmm. Yep. And... It, it's it might yes it's a nice gesture but it's something that's ingrained to us to say that we want to pay it back right that we want to give it back mm -hmm. right so you want to you have an obligation to give when you receive right go ahead received first if a friend invites you to their party there's an obligation for you to invite them to a future party you are hosting if a colleague does Stop. your favor right hey i invited them to my wedding so i got to <laughs> okay yep. they invited me to their wedding now i got to invite them to mine mm -hmm. right yep. you might not really want them there right go ahead yep. favor then you owe that colleague a favor and in the context of a social obligation people are more likely to say yes to those that they owe one of the best demonstrations hey that's why paul says oh no man anything yeah right you don't want to be on the hook with that right, right. but to right. apply god's laws but to apply god's <laughs> laws <laughs> Don't owe nobody. Don't just mean like money. I mean, don't owe anything yep. mm -hmm. because you're going to feel obligated to give that yes. Yep. Right. Damn, I'm in a bind. Well, you owe me one. Right. Mm -hmm. So go ahead. The principle of reciprocation comes from a series of studies conducted in restaurants. So the last time you visit a restaurant, there's a good chance that the waiter or waitress will have given you a gift, probably at about the same time that they bring your bill, a liqueur, perhaps, or a fortune cookie, or perhaps a simple mint. So here's the question. Does the giving of a mint have any influence over how much tip you're going to leave them? Most people will say no, but that mint can make a surprising difference. <laughs> In the study, giving diners a single mint at the end of their meal typically increased tips by around 3%. Interestingly, mm. if the gift is doubled and two mints are provided, tips don't double. They quadruple mm. a 14% increase in tips. Brothers need to start but bringing perhaps... mints to work. <laughs> <laughs> They're getting bigger tips. Yeah, right. right. Yep. Spaghetti factory. Right. <laughs> Good. Yeah, <no. laughs> Good. What's most interestingly of all is the fact that if the waiter provides one mint, starts to walk away from the table, but pauses, turns back, and says, for you nice people, here's an extra mint, 
tips go through the roof. A 23% increase influenced mm. not by what was given, but how it was given. So the key to using the principle of reciprocation is to be the first to give and to ensure that what you give is personalized and unexpected. Right. So, you know, they use that type of information and they'll and they'll set it up like in a manner that makes you feel obligated to say that yes back. They do that yep. in the churches when they when they uh you feel obligated to tithe. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And how they set it up, right? Hey, listen, you know, and, and they'll play on that reciprocity. So you think, damn, but they're not giving me nothing, right? It might be that they come by and they make sure they shake each and one of your hands and things like that. Mm -hmm. And all those things, right? And you'll know that they're gaming you, but you'll still give them something. Yep. That's you still, you'll you know, still move in that way. They, right? make, they make bank. Tax-free. Right. Uh-huh. Uh, move, uh, move forward to, the, to when he says the next one, the second one. Because uh, for the sake of time, I want to skim through some of these. Hey, Deke, also, the first, like, five seconds, it didn't have sound, so it was yeah, just Yeah, 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 like I saw that. Oh, you skipped a bunch of them. Go back. He was already at number four. You need the second one. No. No, go back. Go. No, you're going forward. You, that's already the fourth one. He's almost done with this one. Just finish where you <laughs> Today <laughs> took off. Notice that nothing had changed about the Concorde itself. Why, wait, it certainly you, didn't fly any thing? faster. Yeah, go, the, go, go back. Oh my there you go. Right there. Go ahead, just play it for me. Be the first to give and to ensure that what you give is personalized and unexpected. The second universal principle of persuasion is scarcity. Simply put, people want more of those things they can have less of. Mm. Right, you want what you when can't British have. British Airways right. announced in 2000. Hey, that's like that scene in uh, Devil's Advocate. I was recently watching it again because it was on Netflix. And uh, he was saying how uh, the way God set things up, he goes, it's, a, a, he, you know, he's supposed to be the devil. So he said yeah. it's all a joke. And he was saying, you know, look, but don't touch. Mm -hmm. You know, touch, but don't taste. Taste, but don't. I forgot what else he says, yeah. but he has like a whole scene there where he talks about that stuff. Yeah. Why? Because it creates a, a scarcity, right? right? Oh, that's not for me. You want what you can't have, mm -hmm. right? Go ahead. 2003, that they would no longer be operating the twice daily London, New York Concord flight because it had become uneconomical to run. Sales the very next day took off. Notice that nothing had changed about the Concorde itself. It certainly didn't fly any faster, the service didn't suddenly get better, and the airfare didn't drop. It had simply become a scarce resource, and as a result, people wanted it more. So when it comes to effectively persuading others using the scarcity principle, the science is clear. Like it's not enough paper. simply to... Right, <laughs> right. That that so yeah. the people saw. You might oh, not have needed oh, toilet right. paper during the whole pandemic, yeah, right? But when you saw that there wasn't toilet, you're like, "Well, hell, let me grab some stock because up. because there might not be." So while people did try to stock up, and I don't know where the hell why it became toilet paper of all things. Yeah. But when people started to see that toilet paper was scarce. You started going, and said, damn, oh, toilet paper's available? Maybe I should get some. Right. I mean, I got three, you know, freaking 48-roll packs in my house already. I don't know how much you wipe your damn ass. <laughs> yeah. yeah, toilet paper, Clorox wipes, all that. Yeah. Clorox yeah. wipes, whatever it is. Yeah. So you're like, damn, so let me grab more. Right. So it, so it creates the scarcity, and it makes other people buy more. Mm -hmm. Right? Go ahead. To tell people about the benefits they'll gain if they choose your products and services you'll also need to point out what is unique about your proposition and what they stand to lose if they fail to consider your proposal. Our third principle of influence is the principle of authority, the idea that people follow the lead of credible, knowledgeable experts. This is what, uh, and he says credible, knowledgeable, but this yep. is what is, Officer Issachar was saying earlier, where they'll put our athletes, our celebrities, mm -hmm. to be the voice of certain things. Mm -hmm. But we give them credibility. We see them as yeah. credible, so we follow after those type of things. Go ahead. Physiotherapists, for example, are able to persuade more of their patients to comply with recommended exercise programs if they display their medical diplomas on the walls of their consulting rooms. People are more likely to give change for a parking meter to a complete stranger if that requester wears a uniform rather than casual clothes. 
What the science is telling us is that it's important to signal to others what makes you a credible, knowledgeable authority before you make your influence Hey, attempt. and stop for a second. You know, I'm going to tell you this in a positive way as like a little tip for some people. Uh, always show up to an interview dressed properly. Right. Don't matter what it's for. Mm -hmm. If you're being interviewed for something, show up properly. I had uh, someone on Facebook uh, that I used to um, work with years ago, and she's like a... I, not a nurse practitioner. She's like a doctorate of nursing or something. Anyway, uh, she was talking about how she had someone coming, good candidate, good grades and everything, was coming to interview for the program. And she basically showed up like in flip-flops or whatever. Mm -hmm. And as she was like kind of telling her, like, hey, you do understand like this is an interview or whatever, right? So there's, there's an influence that comes with how you present yourself, right? So they're saying authority here. Uh, it's like somebody will come up to you in a suit versus jeans and a T-shirt. And you're kind of going to snap more to attention and listen to them more than somebody who's not dressed appropriately. Right? That's heavy. So, and it's automatic. Mm -hmm. It's automatic. Yep. You know? And you'll make the presumption that there's somebody in authority. What were you going to say? No, I'm just, I just saying the same thing. Like, even back in the day, even like the comedians, they would always dress up nice. Uh huh. You know what I mean? They don't do it now, but they used to dress yeah. up because they would, oh, now he made, he made it big. Now he's like mm -hmm. compared to the other. Uh, I know like George Lopez would do it. Uh, who all the other comedians that came after, like the, the white comedians, they, they did it also. Yeah. And here's the thing. You'll know this information, mm -hmm. and it still applies to you. Yep. Even being aware of this, you will be persuaded by these type of things. It's heavy. Go ahead. Of course, this can present problems. You can hardly go around telling potential customers how brilliant you are, but you can certainly arrange for someone to do it for you. And surprisingly, the science tells us that it doesn't seem to matter if the person who introduces you is not only connected to you, but also likely to prosper from the introduction themselves. One group of real estate agents were able to increase both the number of property appraisals and the number of subsequent contracts that they wrote by arranging for reception staff who answered customer inquiries to first mention their colleagues' credentials and expertise. Oh, a, a guy on on, on uh, Facebook did this. His name is uh, for New York. His Sam, his girlfriend came over. His ex girlfriend. They were gonna went out, and he would buy a neighborhood and say, "Hey, when I come in here, just hey, say that that I thank you for saving my family. Hey, Sam, you know, just just give me a big hug and everything." So we went by. We was call him. Hey, Sam, how's it going, man? Thank you, man. Hey, can I get a picture? And then she's all like, "Wow, wow." And then they got back together. <laughs> So that was funny. I, I, I got a story, but I'm not going to say yeah. it. <laughs> I got, you said that, and I got one of my stories. I'm debating whether I should Bring say it, it or not. Bring it out. <laughs> All right, I'm going to say it. <laughs> I'm going to give you an example of what he's yeah. just saying now. So I had a friend, all right, Luis Rodriguez, okay? Rodriguez. <laughs> and uh, he was my friend from high school. Uh, we 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 started our boy band together. Yes, I had a boy band. Uh, we used to, Bruh, it, it was me and him. Another story for another day. <laughs> me and him. We used to sing and do shows and stuff like that. Anyway, I remember I had uh, I had lost touch with him over the years. We linked up again, and uh, he was promoting uh, at the China Club in New York. Right, they were trying to like bring it back to its glory to the China Club. Mm -hmm. Every time I, I hear that, I think of Dave Chappelle. Welcome to the China Club. <laughs> cha, 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 cha. <laughs> anyway, so we went to the China Club. And he did this. I didn't ask him to do this, yeah. but I'm going to show you the impact that it had. He would introduce me to people or like, okay, I'll say what it is. He would introduce me to women. Yeah. And, <laughs> <laughs> and he would be like, uh, hey, this is so-and-so. And, you know, she's like, oh, hi, whatever. You know, may maybe not so interested or right. whatever. He was like, you don't know who this is? And then he would start talking like some wild stuff. Oh, you know, he's known for this and that and this, that and the other and this. And the whole freaking vibe would change. Demeanor changed up. Because, wow. and it's wild because if I yeah. went up and tried to talk about myself that way, it wouldn't have went good. Nah, nah. But he did. And so I didn't know he was doing, remember, I just, so this was like his thing. Like, so they had this thing where like, you know, if he was interested in a girl, like I would basically introduce him right. and talk him up. That's Bo, man. and I'm talking about interest would skyrocket yep. off of that stuff, bro. <laughs> like, it's, so this stuff, like, in its yeah. simplest form, yeah. I know. That's why I said. I wasn't sure if I wanted to share the story, <laughs> but it was too funny interest, for me yeah. not to. I remembered it, bro. I remembered yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. And you know and what's crazy is not even just speaking about it, also when uh, body language, too. When somebody walks into the room and uh -huh. you kind of, like, sit up or you stand up or... Uh -huh. 
you know, you notice that they don't do it for somebody else. Oh, well, this guy's my yeah, important. He might, he might be somebody important. Yeah, and then you'll stand up, not yeah. even knowing who it is, right? right? Go ahead. So, customers interested in letting a property were told lettings. Let me connect you with Sandra, who has over 15 years' experience letting properties in this area. Mm. Customers who wanted more information about selling properties were told, speak to Peter, our head of sales. He has over 20 years' experience selling properties. I'll put you through now. The impact of this expert introduction led to a 20% rise in the number of appointments and a 15% increase in the number of signed contracts. Not bad for a small change informed from persuasion science that was both ethical and costless to implement. Right, so he's talking about this from a sales, but remember he's saying ethical, meaning he's implying that these things are used unethically all the time. Right. Right, and it falls under social engineering, okay? Uh, Louis, you, you know what? Yes, I think the last I remember, Louis Rodriguez was in Florida. I've lost touch with him, but he was in Florida. <laughs> I had tried to talk to him about the truth, but I think he was married to Edom at the time. Yeah. So it was a little weird for me some years back. But uh, there is a I, last I remember, he was in Florida. Yes. Uh, go ahead. <laughs> the next principle is consistency. People like to be consistent. With the things they hey, have but to Louis do. Rodriguez is a real common name, and so is Louis. What it comes yeah. people, so it could just be. And you know what? A lot yeah. of people moved to Florida from New York. So oh, he became, be, he became a little famous. Yeah, no, no, this brother's saying that he there's a Louis Rodriguez he knows okay. in Florida. So mm. I mean, small world, maybe. Yeah, maybe. Hey, maybe he needs to get this word. Maybe yep. he needs to Bring get this word. I don't know. If it's the same one, maybe he needs to get this word. Anyway, go ahead. Obviously said or done. Consistency is activated by looking for and asking for small initial commitments that can be made. In one famous set of studies, researchers found, rather unsurprisingly, that very few people would be willing to erect an unsightly wooden board on their front lawn to support a drive safely campaign in their neighborhood. However, in a similar neighborhood close by, four times as many homeowners indicated that they would be willing to erect this unsightly billboard. Why? Because 10 days previously, they had agreed to place a small postcard in the front window of their home that signaled their support for a Drive Safely campaign. That small card was the initial commitment that led to a 400% increase in a much bigger but still consistent change. Hey, I'll show you how that consistency is. So he's talking about consistency here yep. and how it it fosters a commitment. So the point is, uh, you know how to say a little leaven, leaven if the whole number. Yes, it sir. only It only takes you dipping a toe in mm. for you to be more committed down down the line with that stuff. Right. So... It's kind of like the, that desensitization that they do by exposing yep. you softly to something and then making it more profound. That's what they did with the LGBTQ agenda. Mm -hmm. They brought it out in subtle ways, right? Little bit, little bit. Okay, just acceptance, just acceptance. Okay, no, now they can get married. And then to the point now where if you speak against it, it's problematic, right? right. So they, they were consistent in, the, in how they went about it. And then it wound up just changing the whole way that uh, most of us yep. saw that. And, yep. and created acceptance from it, mm -hmm. right? And so, in this case, the unsightly sign is full blown acceptance and and promoting LGBTQ. He yep. said, but when you basically when you start small, but you stay consistent with the message, mm -hmm. people are gonna go to get on board with it. Right. You'll be yep. persuaded to get on board with it. I remember when we used to uh, used to do go door to door, and one of the things that we were trained to do is have them just say the word yes. So we would ask them a question. Oh, is that your your car? Yes. Oh, that's a very nice car. And you would ask them certain questions, and then you get more yeses. Uh -huh. Then they're like, oh, you know what? Mind if I come in? And they're like, oh, yes. No mind if I do. And then and they wish you in the door. That's it. It's a wrap. Yep. Uh, you know what? Go back to the article. I want to. I think we can get through it a little faster if we read, because I want to get to at least social construct uh, before we jump to social behavior. And, like I, again, I'm going to have to continue this topic. Uh, so commitment, I'm sorry. So, uh, go ahead, read that. Commitment. People like to maintain consistent behavior. Because of this, a small action can lead to larger actions. Sia Denny uh, cites an example that I love. A study in which a random sample of people were called and asked how they would respond if asked to donate three hours of their time volunteering for the American Cancer Society. The researcher noted down, which people said yes, most did. Who wants to be the guy who 
who bristles at the idea of volunteer work and called them back later requesting that they volunteer. The American Cancer Society saw a 700% increase in volunteers over the traditional efforts. Right. So he giving you an example. When they would call them and, bl- and outright ask them to volunteer, they were like, no. Mm-hmm. But when they called them and asked them, would they potentially, right? They left it at that, and then they would call back, whether later or the next day or whatever it is, and then they saw an increase in commitment yep. because they had already uh, planted that consistent messaging across the board. Mm-hmm. So now you feel committed to doing it, right? Then you have consensus. There's a big one that they talk about in sales, right? Consensus. People tend to do what they believe everyone around them is doing. Right. We yep. want to follow the masses, right? Yep. You tend to do what you believe everybody around you is doing. Come on. Particularly when they are unsure of what to do in the first place. Right. This is why you'll be like, you know, uh, you'll see things like at con- you'll be like, how do people die at a concert, like at a stampede? Right. Because people just start following people, right? Yep. They don't even know which way they want to go or what they want to do. So this is why things get chaotic. So people, people just, oh, so you'll follow this one, you'll follow that one, whatever it is, mm-hmm. right? Come on. If you walk into a crowded room and everyone is staring at the ceiling, what's the first thing you're going to do? You're gonna right. Stare, yeah. You're going to stare at the ceiling. Mm. I'll give you another example. They do this in sales. Uh, I, they'll say nine out of ten dentists uh, recommend. Uh, recommend Listerine. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Boom. Everybody's buying Listerine. Yep. Right. Because there's a consensus behind that. That's heavy. So they'll tell you that, right, in in wickedness, right? Oh, well, most people accept this. Now you start to look like the oddball out. Yep. Right. Now you start to look like the one that you have a problem. Mm. So they'll go and they'll play on that consensus thing. Oh, go ahead. Read Unity. Unity. Gravitate toward people who who we identify as being similar to us. This is where nationalism, the family bond, and women's march all originate from. It's also why we like it when we share an interest with somebody. It's something we have in common. In practice, these principles are often used in combination, which is something we'll see as we apply them to real-world examples of social engineering tactics. Right, so he goes into a lot of this stuff about the tactics of social engineering, and social engineering tends to work because they use these, they have it down to a science, which means it's a crafty council, Mm -hmm. it's a system that they got down, that if they apply a combination of these six principles, you will persuade people to do whatever you want. Mm-hmm. Right. Go ahead. Read the scripture that I had told you to bring up. The book of First Ezra, chapter five and verse seventy three. And by their secret plots. Right. So there's a secret plot. And popular <laughs> persuasion. And they use these. Their secret plot is to keep us in sin, to keep us in sinful behavior, to keep us uh, ununited, to cast our bands asunder and to and to change the flow of our society the future outcome of our society to change the way we move as Israelites. So they use their secret plots and they use their popular persuasions. They use these different tactics and combinations of them in order to get us to be the way they want us to be, which is as long as it's against this Bible, Mm -hmm. then they know that they're, they don't care particularly what it is as long as it's not this. Right. As long as it's not this. And this is why they have a, a, a an abundance mm-hmm. of things that you can go after. Maybe yeah. LGBTQ is not your thing. Maybe it's, uh, um, you know, multiple wives. Maybe it's who am mongering. Maybe it's a, a bunch of different things that it could be. Maybe it's uh, like they're doing with marijuana. Hey, it's okay to be high, right? Mm-hmm. Maybe it's uh, legalizing prostitution, whatever right. it is. They find things that you want to be a part of in that way. And that's how they move. Yeah. Was that in that verse? No. Go ahead. Popular persuasions and commotions. And commotions, right? So they'll they'll throw that's that tumult. They'll yep. put this stuff out there in a manner that that keeps you guessing and all you do is wind up following the consensus then. Come on. They hindered the finishing of the building all the time that King Cyrus lived. Right. So remember, their goal here was to literally hinder the physical construction, right? But they are hindering the building of us as a nation. Right. They don't want us to stand back up united, keeping these laws, statutes, and commandments. You're going to say something, yeah, officer? The diligent search that they've been doing to to seek out iniquity, this is not just recently. They've been working this since the beginning of time. And especially here in the, in the, the United States of America, where they push the agenda little by little, where they sprinkle it. Uh, like, you know, we grew up in the 90s, and 
We're 80s too. Well, I grew up in the 80s. <laughs> 80s and 90s. <laughs> but we saw a lot of things on TV. Some of it was taboo on TV. Uh-huh. You know, and and yeah. and we just saw little by little increasing. Now it's they just sprinkled it, right? Yeah, they and it's just now that, it's just crazy. Yeah, that goes into that commitment and how they put it out. So little by little, little by little, that consistency in it, little by little, and then it became normalized behavior. And it's kind of like the reverse. At first, when they when they wanted to put it out, they couldn't. We can't put it out like mm-hmm. uh, just straight up. We got to make fun of it first, mm-hmm. and then we can't make fun of it because now it's a hey, right. It's respectable, right? Get me normalization, and then and then we're gonna go into social construct. Normalization. I posted that today. I think. Wiki. Normalization. Damn, I didn't even get to those other videos. I guess we'll do that next week. Cause th- those other videos were it's like examples, so you'll see examples of social engineering on on sinister scales. Okay, normalization. Um, Yeah, go ahead, read. Normalization refers to social processes through which ideas and actions come to be seen as normal. All right, go ahead. And become taken for granted or natural in everyday life. There are different behavioral attitudes that humans accept as normal, such as grief for a loved one, avoiding danger, and not persi- not participating in cannibalism. Right. Some societies, though, cannibalism is normal, right? Right. So click on normal. Normality, yes. Normality. Yeah. Normality is a behavior that can be normal for an individual in a personal normality when it is consistent with the most common behavior for that person. Come on. Normal is also used to describe individual behavior that conforms to the most common behavior in society, known as conformity. Known as conformity. I'm going to come back to that. Come on. However, normal behavior is often only recognized in contrast to abnormality. So you cannot taste the sweet if you don't have the bitter Mm. right you don't know what's salty if you don't have the sweet so he's saying normal is only recognized in contrast to abnormal Mm. right so go remember god is binary Mm. they talk about this non-binary stuff but god made male and female god made right pairs of everything right right? well we know he made multiples of everything but the way he rolls right there's a good and a bad there's there's a contrast to it. We brought out um I don't know if it was last week or the week before where we were talking about in uh Second Ezra's how his thing from the beginning was Jacob against Esau, yeah, right? right? I needed to show you what was normal and what was abnormal, right? right? I needed to show you that difference. And Go. with this too, I mean it's going cuz it's talking about that contrast. Mm-hmm. I was thinking of a uh... I think it's in Corinthians it talks about comparing spiritual things with spiritual things. Yes, that's a good one to bring out. Finish reading this, uh, and then I want Romans 12. Yes, sir. And then you can bring out that one comparing spiritual with spiritual. Go ahead. In its simplest form, normality is seen as a good while abnormality is seen as bad. Someone being So you see that? Normality is seen as good while abnormality is seen as bad. So it's really a matter of perspective and how your mind has been socially engineered. Mm. because people see what we do in keeping these commandments as abnormal. I also want the one where it says we're peculiar people, all right, as abnormal, right? Come on. Someone being seen as normal or not normal can have social ramifications, such as being included, excluded, or stigmatized by wider society. And I don't have time because the videos are too long today, but when I go into the SPLC piece and those videos where the senators were were questioning and blasting the SPLC, you're going to see how... How when you have being seen as normal or abnormal in how you behave, the social ramifications is that and being stigmatized, being deemed as a hate group because we want to keep these law statutes and commandments and we go against the status quo of right. normalization. All right. Get me Romans 12 and 2. The book of Romans chapter 12 and verse 2. And be not- because, because it says... Normal is used to also describe individual behavior that conforms to the most common behavior in society, known as conformity. So what society as a whole considers normal is conformity to the status quo. We read that in 1 Maccabees 141, that all should be one people, Mm -hmm. all should leave their laws. All right, read this. Come on. The book of Romans, chapter 12 and verse 2. And be not conformed to this world. There's that conformity. So the Bible, Paul... Paul knew about that. He didn't know it was going to be called social engineering and normalization. Mm. 
But these tactics were employed back then. And he says, but don't be conformed to this world. Don't be conformed to the way society at large tells you to be. Come on. But be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Be transformed, meaning escape this place. Escape the way that this place is polluted and tries to pollute you. Be transformed by the renewing of your mind. That's that programming that we speak about. That you have to feed your spirit in these scriptures all the time. Because if not, you will fall into the conformity of this world. Come on. That ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Right. Because the only way you're going to be able to know that is to understand what really is abnormal to the normal. Mm. And for the Israelites, the normal resides in the scriptures. That's right. That's the only way you're going to yep. know what's normal behavior. That's the only way you're going to know what's right behavior. And it may seem fairly obvious... But it's not because we still have the same sins, the same yep. issues over and over. And why? It's because we let ourselves fall into this conformity of what's normal, what's acceptable and types of behavior. Right. Mm -hmm. We flow with that instead of measuring it against what the scripture says, that good, acceptable and perfect will of God. What were you going to bring out? Uh, I think it's first Corinthians is a two. Uh, Comparing spiritual with spiritual. Right. If, if, for a lot of us, uh, the, what happens is we, we've lived more out in the world than we've lived in the truth. So those old spirits come back in seasons. They come back and we got to continue to, to uh, fight them with the scriptures. Right. right. What would you say? You had to. Uh, uh, First Corinthians 2 and 13. Yep. 2 and 13. Go ahead. First Corinthians chapter two and verse thirteen. Freedom. Which things also we speak, not in word which man's wisdom teacheth. Because man's wisdom teaches us that it's okay to be a homosexual. It's okay for a woman to wear pants. It's okay for men to wear dresses. But we're not speaking in words which men's wisdom speak, that which they teach. Read. But which the Holy Ghost teacheth. So which the Holy Ghost teaches. We're being taught by the Holy Ghost, by God's laws, what is normal, what is right. Read. Comparing spiritual things with spiritual. Comparing spiritual things with spiritual. So it's the same thing on this. We have to have a contrast. We have to have good and evil so we can be able to compare spiritually between the two. Right. So uh, we have to be able to go ahead and do that. Uh, read on though. Don't d d yep. keep going. But the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God. Because you're conformed. You're normalized. Mm. You fell into conformity. This is why in Romans 12 and 2 he says, uh, so that you may prove that good, perfect, acceptable will of God. Right. And he says, but if you're rolling in that natural, he says you're not going to receive the things of the Spirit of God. Come on. For they are foolishness unto him. It's going to be seen as abnormal behavior. Right. And the stuff that is polluted and evil becomes normalized to you. Come on. Neither can he know it them because they are spiritually discerned. Right. And how do you build yourself up spiritually? Uh, let's get Psalms 111 and 10. That's the foundation of it. And we often forget that. The book of Psalms, chapter 111 and verse 10. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Right. So you first have to have a reference point in this Bible, right? Somebody says they don't believe in the Bible. Uh, there's not much of a discussion for you to have with them. At all. Because nothing you bring out of it is going to have any impact on them, right? And I'm talking about somebody that's coming scoffing. I'm not saying yep. that you can't find somebody that says there's no God and that you can't show him God in the Bible, right? Mm -hmm. You most certainly can, all right? But you have to build that foundation in fear, Right. So you got to build that fear up first in somebody. Read that again. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Right. That's the beginning of that wisdom. That's how you're going to go ahead and be able to get that spiritually discerned knowledge. And how do you abound in that? How do you increase in that? Come on. A good understanding have all they that do his commandments. A good understanding you will have when you do the commandments. The fear will drive you to start to keep them. Even though you may not fully understand, even though you may not be fully persuaded in your own mind. Mm -hmm. All right. But you will go ahead and then build upon that and you'll get that uh, uh, understanding, that spiritual discernment. Right. That last part, too, is heavy. It says uh, someone being seen as normal or not normal can be can have social ramifications such as being included 
excluded or stigmatized by water society. And that made me think of uh, all them that will live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. Right. It's the same thing. Right. The social engineering, the normality, all of these things play a factor into the way that we go through our afflictions and the reason why we're going through it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that normalization okay. is pretty heavy. Go back to normalization. That's the normality. Right. And it's letting you know it's behavior based. Right. And these laws drive behavior. Right. These laws drive behavior. So you want to be normal with God, right? You got to make sure that you're understanding and keeping these commandments. Read normalization again. Normalization refers to social processes through which ideas and actions come to be seen as normal and become taken for granted or natural in everyday life. Right. So social processes, that goes back to the social engineering where it talks about led by governments, by media, by academia. And uh, we're going to touch on agents of socialization, Lord's will, the next show. All right. Um... And we'll go into it a little more, and you'll see some of those normalization processes, right? We still have to talk about social constructs. We still have to talk about social behavior, but I'm kind of leading this yep. up to it, right? Just real quick, let me give a preview of the agents of socialization. I, I did uh, several shows on that, on, but that was only on the Facebook platform when we were doing uh, just a Saturday show. Um, so we'll probably kind of open that up again and go into it in more detail in relation to this. Hey, hey Deacon. Just, yeah. We got uh, Deacon Abiel in the queue. Oh. Okay. Just okay, but you but you, you didn't you didn't do the phone ring. I, I wanted to catch you before you got too deep off into what you were about to go <laughs> to. Hey, is, is he on? Shalom, Deacon Most High Christ bless you. Hold on. Let me get him on for Oh, get him on. Get him on. <laughs> I feel special now, bro. Yeah. <laughs> I feel I feel honored. All right, he's live. Hey, is this the Deke in the booth? This is Deke in the booth. What's happening? What's happening? Hey, wow, man. <laughs> so, so, so it only took me being uh, promoted to a deacon for you to call into the show. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Come on, man. <laughs> Shalom, shalom, um, Deke. Welcome to the Power Hour right, Plus, man. Right. Thanks for calling in. What's going on, sir? Hey, nothing much, man. Just tapping in with my Northern Kingdom brothers in the building. What's happening, y'all? Hey, man, we here. Yeah, we, no. I'm, I'm, I'm glad you called us before we wrapping up. We ready to wrap up. We setting the teaser up for the next show. Going into helping change the condition of, of, of what's going on out there. Are people being conditioned? I don't know how long you were watching for. We talk about them Christian pastors and all that madness. You know, we've been talking about that, so. Bruh, man, listen, that we've literally just got through dealing with this stuff. Hell, hell every Sunday we've been dealing with this nonsense, man. But that scripture you dropped in 1 Corinthians, the second chapter, is the key to why they, these folks have checked out to the understanding of this Bible. Mm. How is it you can't see at this point that here it is, Starting in Genesis, where everything went bad was because God's laws was broken. That's right. We read yep. throughout the scriptures, like y'all pulled in Psalms 111 and 10, a good understanding have all they that do his commandments. Then you go up to, what's that, into, uh, with Christ, John 14, if you love me, keep my commandments. Mm -hmm. All throughout the Bible, it says keep the commandments, keep the commandments, keep the commandments. But a so-called Christian, the light ain't on yet. And we think, our people think that by breaking God's commandments, they're going to be able to get out of the situation that they're in. That ain't the answer, man. And that's why they're spiritually checked out. Like you said, spiritually discerned. Mm. The light has been turned off, man. And that's what we're up against. That's what we're battling. Man. Yeah. Hey, we jump. We've hey, been fighting against this commandment. Earlier, we brought out Isaiah 30. And it says they don't want it. They don't want the truth. Keep yeah. the whole, don't, don't give us the Holy One of Israel. Speak Prophesy smooth, smooth things. things. Yeah. Prophesy deceits. And, yeah. that, and, and that's all that they're focused on. They, 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 they just pimps of the people, man. That's all it is. That's it's all it is. Here. Ridiculous, man. Exactly. Ridiculous. Exactly. Yep. And it's all, it's all to get that dishonest game, man. But, hey, we up for the battle. We looking for those that's going to do right, keep God's commandments, because they out there. We gonna keep on pressing for us. So we get the hell up. Hey, out. that's right. Hey, we are reading earlier. Our enemies make a tumult. We don't want God to keep silence. Yep. We ain't gonna keep silent either. That's why we yep. bring in the fight to them. That's it. That's right. That's, that's it. Right. All praises. Hey, to the all praises. Deep. Thing on the power hour plus, man. I'm in the building. Hey, bro. all praises. All praises. Deep, deep. Appreciate, appreciate it. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. I wish I had the video thing set up so I could so I could get the full effect. Yeah, the okie doke. <laughs> <laughs> So I can get the full effect. Hey, I appreciate I appreciate the call in, Deke. All praise to Mosai. Hey, that blog, 
bro. I heard Blog Talk Radio, man. It took me back, bro. <laughs> <laughs> it took me back. I didn't realize yeah bro that's how we started like four years ago you know we didn't know what was going on out there so we just we keep it you know just another way to get it out there you never know who's listening off of that or whatever so yep. just that thing stay on there you right, know right yep yep all praise to the most high yep. hey that reminds me before we're done we gotta tell them we on spotify too so yep, spotify. we gotta check power Hour plus is on spotify all right so people could check that out all right? right yep yep all right deep man i appreciate it man you have a good night sir most high Christ Most high Hey, so I just want to show real quick the ages of socialization for the next show, and then we're going to wrap it up. I can't, I, I, I can't wrap it up any better than my, a, a guest visit from yep, Deacon yeah, Aviel. All praises to the Most High. <laughs> all praises to the Most High for that. Show, and, and they were having, they got saved by the bell because yep. I, you see the thing's not moving, right? Yeah. He has no idea but, what but I'm no, talking wait, about. Before they take this off right quick, uh, and you know what? In ten years, guess what? That bottom part cannibalism that's going to be taken off because it's going to be so normal that they're going to use something else oh, right. on about, there. Yeah, yeah you yeah. understand? Uh, that's how things the things change so much. Yep, they'll put something else in there. Something will get normalized. Do you know what I'm talking about? Do you have the agents of socialization link? Go go back. He has to. He has to go back. There you go. It's going to be there somewhere. Oh my goodness. Jesus, take the wheel. <laughs> oh my good. <laughs> there it is. That's it right there, right? Oh, that's not it. Is that it? Senator oh my Holly. goodness. I don't even have my telegram open to look it up. It's in the thing. It was a link. It brought up the ages of socialization. All right, you're messing it up. Okay, that's the show for this week. And this was the Power Hour Plus. Boy, plus, yeah, no, plus, normally plus. we leave on... Well, uh, see, I shouldn't even said it. We should have left on the high note of, of Deep being on the yeah. call. <laughs> look, look, they're still going back and forth. Like, they're going to find it that way. If you didn't find it that way the first time, you're not going to find it that way this time. You should be clicking each link at this point so you can see what it is. I don't want it anymore. I don't want it. I don't want it. Don't even look for it. We're wrapping up the show. We got English on Saturday? Uh, Yes, sir. All right. Saturday, tune in on Facebook at the Lost 144K. All right. Exclusively on Facebook, 11 a.m. Arizona time. Okay. Uh, And then next week, uh, we're going to have some uh, special hosts on the show. All right. I'll leave that. I'll leave that for you. Uh, the week after is when we'll continue on with the rest of this topic. We still got to s- cover the social constructs, the social behavior, and where you seconds. see that in the scriptures. And then we'll move into those agents of socialization yep. to show you more of the tactics that they use. So, right, starting with family, school system, and then we'll move into uh, religion as well mm-hmm. as time permits and all that stuff yep. to see how these things are purposely designed to engineer your minds to corrupt, right? And to, and to subdue the simple mind, all right? So uh, with that, we say shalom and uh, be safe. Most Power, shalom. Power, Power Hour Christ Plus bless. on Spotify. Oh, yeah. Power Hour Plus on Spotify. Yeah. Check us out on Spotify, all right? We have replays of the shows on there that you can listen to on the go, all right? With that, we say shalom. 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 This for the southern kingdom, Kwame Asharala. Hey, one nation, one nation. This for the northern kingdom, Viva Rasa. We one nation, one nation. This for the southern kingdom, Kwame Asharala. Hey, one nation, one nation. This for the northern kingdom, Viva Rasa. We one nation, one nation. It wouldn't be Israel without Mexicans. Black love, brown pride, cause we next to kin. We ain't gotta tell Esau to let's be friends, cause we above all nations and we better than them. We the salt of the earth, ay, ay. And we been king since birth, ay, ay. We put the kingdom first, ay, ay. And they gon' get this work, ay, ay. We was chosen, not cause we the most of the people. Few in numbers, but we over the people. We gods of this earth, we ain't supposed to be equal. Stop playing, you emotional people, the good guys. Gotta triumph over the evil So my foot's on the throat of the ego Their tongues will confess that we the people Cause my nation ain't never been feeble For the southern kingdom Kwame Asharala Hey, one nation, one nation This for the northern kingdom Viva la We one nation, one nation This for the southern kingdom Kwame Asharala Hey, 
This for the northern kingdom, viva la raza. I can't take one step without my brothers too If I'm on those muchachos, yeah, you know there's one for you Me gusta el rost con pollo, tacos, chilangos Sipping on cervezas with all me hermanos You didn't eat from that's the two kingdoms Now we one nation over these heathens Royalty bloodline, we be the choice vine Better repent for you run out of time My father gave me salt and the light, yeah, yeah We strong in the Lord and his might, yeah, yeah Better be careful of fire Change all your ways or you'll be his desire Whoa, gotta stay away from Satan changing my mind, friend. Yeah, you know we die and daily turning it up on a feast day. Put this on replay, no longer divided cause we all This for the southern kingdom, Kwame Sharala. Hey, one nation, one nation. This for the northern kingdom, Viva la Rasa. We one nation, one nation. This for the southern kingdom, Kwame Sharala. Hey, one nation, one nation. This for the northern kingdom, Viva la Rasa. We one nation, one nation.